What's going on, guys? And welcome to the best gaming podcast in the universe. How's everybody doing today? <laughs> well, this week we had a ton of stuff happen. We saw the multiplayer for Advanced Warfare. You know I'm excited about that. We saw Gamescom. Uh, the internet nearly exploded during the Xbox conference. Uh, Sony had a heck of a conference. We got a ton to talk about, so I think we should ought to just jump right into it. Do, should we go over what, it, what you guys have been playing this week? You want to start off with that? Same as last week. Same as last week, Last of Us? <laughs> yep. So, are you finding that the player base in Last of Us is sticking with it? Is there enough people... Are, are the lobbies filling up? Are, you know, are you playing the yeah, same people uh, over and over again, or are you... Uh, I, I'm not playing the same people. I don't, I don't think I've had a lobby with uh, the same person yet. Uh, well, this game has already sold 1.8 million, the remastered version. Mm -hmm. And every time I've played, I don't have any issue as far as the amount of people. They're fixing the servers for the connectivity of the Try multiplayer and make the lobbies. Try matchmaking happen faster? I mean, it works a lot better than it did before. Usually if you get a stagnant lobby, you just back out and come back in, and then it joins right up. So they're doing something. Something has changed. But I, like, like I said before, I'm having so much fun with it, I don't want to stop. I'm, I'm pissed off that Destiny's coming out. <laughs> because I know, I know I'm going to... Uh, uh, take a hiatus from The Last of Us and play Destiny probably for the next year or so. It's so much in that game. <laughs> but uh, for, now, for now, let me uh, enjoy my <laughs> ignorance as bliss moment and The Last of Us is all that exists. You guys see I'm in a different environment today. Yeah, I, uh, switching it up. You got that beautiful shirt on, too. Yeah, I knew you liked that, Brian. I knew it. <laughs> I, uh, this is where, where I sit when I'm relaxing at home. And I remember when I was a kid, my dad would do the same thing. He'd Sit on the floor up against the sectional. Mm -hmm. He's just so comfortable. It must be something about us gorilla men. But um, yeah, I'm really enjoying my my new comfort zone. So this is where I'll probably be doing my show. A couch can't contain him. No, it can't. <laughs> Not too nerdy. What have you been playing this week? I saw you streaming PT. What yes. did you think of that? I thought it was pretty good. I mean, I'm pretty sure we're gonna go over all this later. But this game was. <laughs> Creepy. Like, I'm like, I had, I'm like, yeah. I jumped a couple times, got scared, you know, and like, it's funny because like, I had to redo it over again because something froze and I had to start all over again. Oh, really? And, well, it was the fact that I got stuck and then something with a Twitch stream got stuck, so I wanted to film it the right way, so then I started all over again. So and did I you knew, pretend to be scared the second time, or did you? I, the thing is, there's some things that definitely the same jump scare is gonna happen, and I knew it's coming, and I still jumped and like was freaking out at the same spot that I did last time, and I knew it was coming. And yeah. the thing, and it sucks because it doesn't happen the same exact way every single time, which was weird for something that's just a demo or whatever. We'll go over that later, I guess. But yeah, it, it was it was fun though. It seems to have some sort of random number generator allowing events to happen at specific times. Cause did, uh, did, I, 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 I know I played it. Go through. I played it. I know I did. I, I saw your video not too nerdy. Did uh, Briar, you and Robbie, did you guys get a chance to play that? No, I watched. Uh, I watched not too nerdy stream it for a bit, and I also watched another uh, guy stream it for a little bit. I'm not really big on horror games, so it's not really for me. But I I wanted to check it out just because uh, Kojima and um, Guillermo del, del Toro, Toro are involved in it, so I definitely wanted to check it out. But I'm not. And Norman, who's oh, that's right from uh, <laughs> Walking Dead. <laughs> Walking Dead. Can't forget for about Dead. Norman, bro. Yeah. <laughs> what did uh, I, we can probably cover this later? But I wanted to get your um, input, not too nerdy, on what you thought of the visual aesthetic of the game. When, when I played it, it really reminded me of the video that we saw of uh, the Order eighteen eighty six as far as the quality and the way that the world actually looked. It looked almost photorealistic. I spent a lot of time, if you guys saw my video, actually looking at the environment and then running around the corners and getting the shit scared out of me. Mm -hmm. But the environment itself, look, it seems like this is something that definitely couldn't have been done on the last-gen uh, systems. Do you agree? Um, well, here's the thing. Uh, I don't know if you know, which is kind of scary because you said it looked good. I think it looked pretty decent. I look, It looked pretty good, but... Uh, they interview Kojima. Kojima said that he purposely turned down. They turned down the yeah, graphics. I, I read they turned that, yeah. it down because they didn't want people to think because they pretend to be an indie studio. It was 7780s studios, mm -hmm. and it, it, they turned down the graphics to pretend it's an indie studio. <laughs> and that's that's the turn down the graphics. Just let you know that's how good that Fox Engine is. That they turned down the graphics to make it look like that. He was saying. Jeez. So that that's what. 
to me, that's kind of shocking. That it looked pretty decent then. I mean, it looked better graphics than uh, Outlast and stuff like that. It looked like Outlast, the style of it, but it looked like better graphics than that. And the fact that it's turned down, it's pretty shocking, you know. It was the best looking crying fetus I've ever seen in my life. Oh yeah, yeah that's. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> dude, like later that on, that was a next gen abortion, right? Dude, there. Later <laughs> on, it tells a story too, man. It tells a story of how it happened. I'm like, oh my gosh, dude. I, I didn't get that far, man. I I got pretty far. I got to an area that uh that had me stumped, where I was going around really fast. Yeah, you have and, to. Um, in order to beat that part real quick, in case people are wondering, see, I knew from the very beginning, I knew this, that that little hole in the bathroom is a peephole. Because anytime you looked at it, if you looked straight into it, you saw an eye, and then mm -hmm. the eye would move away. It was a peephole. Someone peeped it. They were looking at this whole incident. Someone was looking at it. So like, I, saw, I, I beat that part where you you look through the hole and it, you hear the story being told. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah, the same. I, that's it. You run full speed until you find the hole, peephole. That's all you were supposed to do in the incident. Yeah, oh, but the, the the area past that, I was completely stuck. I, I almost rage quit and threw the controller. I felt like Robbie Field, man. Mm -hmm. I think <laughs> that's oh, the no. thing these vehicles. with that game is that a lot of people were rage quitting because it's so frustrating to figure out how to play it unless you walk look at a walkthrough. I was watching people doing streams, and like the people in the stream were telling them what to do, and they try it, and it wouldn't work. <laughs> I, I think I figured it out, though, at the end. I mean, I, I could go over this later, but I think I figured it out how I did it, because some people are unclear how they did it, and I think I figured it out. Yeah? That I think, I'll explain it again. I think I figured it out. I'm not too we, sure. No, we might, we're talking about the game now. I, we might as well finish talking right, there's about There's one part at the end, like, you like, know... Spoiler alert, things, like, if you want to... If you don't want to know at the end... By the telephone, perfect. there's a spot that says hello, right? Yeah. And you have to walk back and forth. And each time we walk back and forth from the one painting, there's a painting underneath it that says, they were calling me from, and it left it blank. Mm -hmm. When you walk from, when you looked over the phone, it said hello. And yeah, then by the time you go walk back there, and forth until the, the letters yeah, go to the other wall. Until yeah. you, you take away the word hell from the, where it says hello, and you put it there. So they're calling me from hell. So later on, the part where you're saying you're running around for a while, after you beat that, you have to wait till midnight, right? The whole thing is you have to wait for the phone call. So once midnight strikes, the bell rings, you look at the saying, they're calling me from hell. And this is what I think is the answer. Maybe I'm wrong, but this is how it worked for me, and this is how I got it every single time. Once it, you say, you read the line, say, they were calling me from hell, right? And as soon as you do that, you go to listen to them calling you on the radio. That's why you go to the radio. You hear them breathing, and then a baby laughs the first time after you do that. From when you go from the radio, you walk straight to the phone, and a baby laughs the second time, and you stare at the phone the whole time, and eventually it rings. Now, the reason why I think this happens is because you just saw that they're, they're calling you from hell, and that's what it was. You're waiting for them to call you, and then as soon as they call you, they say you've been chosen, and then you walk out. Now, that, to me, seems like the logical explanation. That's why oh, yeah, the saying... totally logical. I, I mean, yeah. <laughs> logical because it's the saying says, call me from hell. That's the only reason why you'll wait for a phone call. And that's why I think they use the word call specifically to try when you hear the word call, it can mean two things. I don't know. I'm trying to think like Kojima, which is very dangerous. Yeah, get inside yeah. of that guy's head. You're about to go crazy. Well, if you think like Kojima, there's got to be like 15 side stories that all clash with the main story and plot twists. But um, another thing I heard about this game is this might, have, might not have anything to do with the final version of the game. No. It might have just been something they made just to throw out there to show you what the engine can do. Yeah, that's what it is, actually, because uh, they interviewed Kojima. Brilliant. He said it's not even first person. It's going back to the third person. This is It's not even first person. So that he already did that. For all the people that liked Silent Hill, he said it's going back to third person. This is just for a trailer. This is literally just to, to confuse people slightly piss them off, and then let them feel rewarded when they figured it out. That was it. <laughs> That's all you percent The 2% yeah. of people who actually figured it out. Yeah. But that, to me, is kind of a bad thing. It's a good thing and a bad thing. The reason I think it's kind of a bad thing is because it's kind of a false bill of goods. If you, if you bring somebody in to this playable teaser, and then you realize the teaser not only had nothing to do with the actual product that you're pushing, but the actual play style is different as well, What's the point of liking this playable teaser if you're going to get something totally different in the Silent Hill? Which I love Silent Hill. Would you want a whole but, game like this, though, really? Yeah, uh, you can't. The thing with Silent Hill know. is Silent Hill is more about the characters, right? 
you need to see the character to to relate to the character or follow the story of the character. If it's first person, you're not going to fall with the character, especially if you're saying that, for example, no one knows for sure if Norman really is in the game, you're not going to relate to Norman's character if you don't see Norman if you are Norman. Do you know what I mean? It's it's a different to relate to the character if you don't see them, especially because oh. Silent Hill is definitely story-driven. You know what I mean? It might be weird stories, but, you know. But they I'm gave Silent, me hints. Silent Hill 2 was the best... Ahead. Silent Hill 2 was the best Silent Hill. Let me just say that flat out. But and and it was a third person experience. But I feel like if they're gonna if they're gonna pull you into this new Silent Hill, this reboot with this type of gameplay, and you actually like the gameplay, which I like first person and third person games, and you actually like this, like I said in the video I made, wow, it looks like they're going in a totally different direction. It might be a good idea. It might be something fresh. And then they go right back to the the old. I feel like this whole playable teaser was just a big sham. Just to raise hype for Silent Hill, and then they give you back what you're used to. I mean, I don't mind third person. I just think I think it was pretty effective, Beastly. I, you know, the way they they released this thing, it doesn't say Silent Hill anywhere on it until you beat it. Uh, you know, it's it's a teaser in kind of like that viral sense where uh, Bungie used to do this a lot with the Halo games. Is they'd kind of seed the internet with these websites that you know didn't have anything to do with Bungie. Maybe it was about bees or something, but there'd be little clues around. You know, that if you wanted to solve them, you could solve them and kind of, like, get some details on the next Halo game. I think this is kind of like that kind of thing where, hey, you know, this this may not have anything to do with the Silent Hill game. Hopefully Norman Reedus will be our main character, but we're not real sure. But it seemed to set that up. You know, it was just, hey, here's the engine. Let's have a little fun. You know, it's going to be a... It was, it's definitely, like, a super hard-to-figure-out thing. It's just something different. And it was... I think it's a cool idea. And, again, free... And again, yeah. PlayStation yeah. exclusive. Yeah. Like PlayStation, every time they have a games conference, I'm going to start booting up my PlayStation to see what's new on there. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing uh, is, yeah. go ahead. It, it's it's weird. It's it's a lot going on. I think throughout the game, like people are going to find more bits and pieces of it that they're hinting towards what the game's going to be at, like be about. I think that's what it is. There's secrets inside that trailer that's hinting towards the game. For example, the line that says. Um, I mean, yeah, the only me is me. I said, are you sure you are the only you? Smoking like, by like, the paper bag? Yeah, like, you know, <laughs> like, so, like, if you hear that, the lines sound epic, and the fact that it came from a plastic a paper bag was freaking epic too, you know? But anyway, um, it makes you think that, like, what are they talking about? Are they relating to another dimension or something like that? Is that the reason why it's called Silent Hills with an S? Because that S means something. You yeah. know, there's something that's going on. They're trying to hint towards it. There's something deeper in that trailer than we know. They might take a couple of weeks or they might explain it to us because Kojima loves doing that. If you can't figure it out, he'll tell you at the end what the purpose was. So, But he said himself he thought it will take people a week or so to figure it out, but some girl in England figured it out first, I think. He said, like, it took her three days or two days to figure it out. So, yeah, I, I agree with you, Briar, uh, that I think it wasn't effective – playable teaser, it got me hyped. I was really excited. I like scary stuff. Uh, and I love Silent Hill, so it's a win-win for me. I was just saying that there might be a, a demographic of people who actually played this, who like games like Amnesia, uh, and saw this and was like, okay, this is something new, like Alien Isolation. And then when they actually see the game, it's something different, and they may feel duped. Now, I won't feel duped. I'm just speaking for that small demographic of people who might. But I think uh, – Overall, I, I agree with you guys that this was a, a great, you know, plan to get people hyped about the new Silent Hill. Because to be honest, the last couple Silent Hills have been fail after fail after fail. I think the last three Silent Hill games sucked. So the fact that we got Guillermo del Toro and uh, Hideo Kojima, that's an epic team up, mm. super mm -hmm. friends. Yeah. So uh, I'm excited to see what they do. Oh, Kojima's interview. Another thing he said why he made this first person for the playable teaser is because when. When you uh, introduce like a new trailer, new like something new, you experience it yourself in the first person, first yeah. person point of view. So they want you to experience it like if you're the one figuring all this stuff out, that you're the one doing it. And then at the well, end, you see that you really aren't you. I think that's what it was. You really aren't you, and then you see who it is, and then you see. Uh, they do a nice thing with the the mirror in the bathroom too. They obscure your face. Yeah, yeah really. you can't see it. Yeah. Uh, and, and something that kind of made me think about Silent Hill early on playing this, I didn't say it out loud. But um, I, I may have said it when I was playing the game. When, when you go around the corner, I think, the third time through the loop, and there's, like, a nurse standing in the hallway. She looks like she's about seven feet tall. 
Oh. She's back, you know, underneath the light, and then the light flickers and she disappears. Oh yeah, that she reminded, in the nurse's outfit. Yeah, I remember yeah, that. I thought that was a nurse, but I didn't put two and two together. So maybe that character will be in the final product. But yeah, I'm excited about it. Okay, the scariest part of that game so far is just that they're dangling that refrigerator by yeah. that. What if that refrigerator fall? There's Shit. all that food is just gonna be ruined. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't understand like. Yeah. There, there was ketchup everywhere. I just saw that. Just it right out. <laughs> what a mess. What what a waste of thing, ketchup. Though, <laughs> Who's going to clean that, this shit up? <laughs> something they don't do in, in most horror games anymore is they hit you with su- subtle scares. Mm-hmm. Things that usually it's really a blatant scare. Something you're definitely supposed to do. You're supposed to go down this hallway, turn this way, and press a button, then you get scared. But there was a time when I was going through the loop and I looked up above where that refrigerator is and I saw this girl looking at me. Mm-hmm. I almost shit myself, man. I was like, oh, God. I just felt like it was like I was in a real haunted house. So hopefully they uh, they keep that momentum up in the Silent Hill game and make it epic for uh, the people like me who like survival horror. I the, love survival horror. Guillermo del Toro is involved. That yeah. guy could do subtle horror. Yeah. The, the one last thing that I want to say, though, is... Uh, the one part where the, the bathroom door opens slightly in the beginning, right? Oh. Now, the, the funny thing about this is that, like, you go up to the door, look through, you try to open it, nothing happens. You look through again, try to open it. So it's been a couple seconds of you trying to fool around still looking at it. And then all of a sudden, ah, like, it comes and slams the door. Like, you see the face and it slams the door shut. That's ridiculous that they programmed it that they know that you're going to try to, to try to figure out how to open the well, door. You're going to relax a little bit. When you, when you zoom in, you have to zoom in with the yeah. R1, I mean the R3 trigger, and I didn't. I, I figured that out a little bit earlier yeah. that you could zoom in. Yeah. And I was looking through there, and I saw it was a bathroom. I didn't want to go in, and when I backed up and when I finally zoomed, that chick stood there and slammed that door. I almost flung my controller out of my hand, man. But the thing is, that I was trying to say is you could zoom, you zoom in in the beginning. Like, I zoomed in right away because I knew it was R3. The, it zoomed in a couple times. They literally had it time to, like, it's you looking at the door for a while before it did anything. To it make lets it, you like, relax a little yeah, bit. Yeah, to make you think it, yeah. nothing's going to happen, and then it did it. Like, that's what made it creepy. Because, like, usually the jump scare, as soon as you look, boom, something happens. But that's not what they did. Like, yeah. These guys are gonna scare the hell out of us. What did you, th- <laughs> yeah. what did you think about? Uh, what did you think about uh, this playable teaser, Robbie? I, I I know you've been doing all the talking lately, but I want you to slow down and tell us what you really thought. I thought it was well, obviously pretty damn scary. Like especially playing with my headset on too. That was really immersed it even more. When like the refrigerator and the kids just like screaming, like it sounds like they're being murdered. That was just horrifying. Like oh my god, it does. Horror really well, I can say. Uh, it wasn't that, that scary. <laughs> I can kind of relate, that. frankly. It was, it was horrible. <laughs> the, the scariest part about the whole thing is when they interviewed Kojima, he also said that usually in games, they don't make it too, too scary that people don't want to finish the game. Because that's what sometimes they have to balance it. Because if it's too scary, people don't want to finish the game. So he said that they do not care if people do not finish the game. That's literally <laughs> direct quote. So that oh, right there is like, oh my gosh. <laughs> like, if he's saying that, that's going to be amazing. So, so just going all out. Yeah, I'm going to be playing for two hours. Call it quits. <laughs> well. All right, guys. So we're, we're moving on now. Uh, well, into uh, let's finish uh, the what you've been playing part. Oh, okay. Let's, not too dirty. You got anything else that you've been playing this week? No, I just had that, and I did like pickups. I did like uh, another garage sale pickups, stuff like that. Star so, Wars. Got uh, Star Wars pickups as well. Insane. <laughs> hey, let I'm me just say this that. about that 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 video, the uh, Star Wars pickups. I like that kind of stuff. Not too dirty. When you switch it up, it's not all games, but it is stuff that people like me, nerd slash collectors, love to look at. Yeah. I'm not going to spoil anything that you know for people who haven't seen the video. But um, I love the fact that you switched up the show a little bit, and it really spoke to me because I got old He-Man figures and all kinds of crazy stuff. So keep that up, man, for sure. No doubt. Thank you, Robbie. What have you been playing? Robbie, your video's frozen for me. I'm not sure. Mine too. I, I thought okay. he was just sitting still. He froze on purpose so he could play a game right now. As he's <laughs> I just left. I just left to go play something. I'm not even in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I've obviously been playing uh, PT quite a bit. Oh, pooping my pants over that. That game was so scary. And then finally got my scuff controller too, so I've been playing 
Call of Duty with that. And How, how's that going? It. I I've talked about we've talked about scuff controllers a little bit in the past, but uh, this is your first scuff controller, right? Yeah, this is my first ever scuff. And it's for the uh, PS4. Yeah, this is the scuff for PS for PlayStation 4. Like it has the longer dome thumbsticks, the paddles in the back, and then the your panels right here. I don't know if you can see that. But like, I, I, I'm getting right. no video from you. You're, you're just sitting still, sir. Okay, well, I'll kind of explain it then. So, yeah, basically it just has longer thumbsticks that give you better accuracy and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It has the paddles in the back to ring out the buttons so, like, you can jump while you're aiming or something like that. It has this sort of, like, rubberized grip, like, handles. Like, it doesn't cover the whole back of the controller. It's just sort of where your hands place, so it feels really, really nice. And overall, like, it just feels really good. And Do you get the really trigger good. stops? No, the 4PS doesn't have trigger stuff. Oh, it doesn't do that. Okay. No. Yeah, Robbie, they have, like, uh, more than one size. Do you have the, the, the middle size for the sticks or the large size? I got the long sticks. The, the long ones? Too. Okay. Yeah. Come on, you know how he rolls. Is there any other choice? <laughs> Damn. I prefer mine long and domed, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. <laughs> okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> damn it, damn it, damn it. <laughs> so I was at work, right? I, I didn't get a chance to see Gamescom when it actually was going on live uh-huh. uh, over in Germany. But uh, Kate sent me a text. Of course, my, my video game Century at Home texted me. And when I read the text, I, the first word that came out of my mouth was bullshit. She texted me. She said, the next Tomb Raider is an Xbox One exclusive. I yeah. texted her back, bullshit. She said, it's true, babe. I'm watching it right now. I got uh, I got online and started investigating this, and I, I even made a video at work about it. And uh, Microsoft appears appeared to have uh, the Rise of the Tomb Raider exclusively on the Xbox One. What did you guys think when you first heard this news? I want your first thoughts, and then I want your thoughts on what came a few days later on this, this story. I'll go first because my answer is pretty inconclusive. I didn't care. Like, uh, one or the other, I was like, yeah, whatever. Uh, you know, they announced it. They didn't show any new gameplay. It was just still photos. So I, mm-hmm. I just passed by it to the more exciting stuff. Uh, and it really wasn't until I started watching your videos, uh, you and Not Too Nerdy, talking about it, where I was like, yeah, man, that's messed up. <laughs> <laughs> this is some fucked up shit right here. <laughs> this ain't right. <laughs> Robbie, I guess your uh, your reaction, to, the reaction is stuck on screen, huh? Yeah, he was just <laughs> he was indifferent. <laughs> Did they get in the freeze him smiling or something? Oh. He just like this. There he is. He's back. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> <laughs> Robbie, welcome back. <laughs> what did you think when you got this news? Not too nerdy. Um, uh, when I heard this, I I knew that. It more more than likely wasn't true because I knew that it didn't make it didn't add up to what Square Enix said. Square Enix originally co- complained because Square Enix publishes for Crystal Dynamics that are developers. Square Enix complained that the the Tomb Raider originally didn't sell too many copies, even though it sold 3.4 million in the first month. They already said that didn't sell enough copies, so it doesn't make any sense that you would stick to one console. And on top of one console, you're talking about the console that sold the least out of the two from the yeah. the last game. So they, they sold, old, like, it's literally the PlayStation sales between PS3 and PS4. So, like, almost double what the Xbox sold for, you know, for the Xbox 360 and Xbox One. So that doesn't make any sense that you're breaking even unless Microsoft literally paid enough money to cover what PlayStation would have got. That would you be have a to stupid, think that you're amount of money. Yeah, mm-hmm. which is a lot of money because you're thinking that you have to increase their sales in this gen- like this round because they brought back a series. So you have to assume that people got word of it. So oh, you know, I'm gonna play the new one. Cause a lot of people got it for free as well for PS3. If you remember, like mm-hmm. people got it free on a PS3, so a lot of people got a chance to play. It, so even more people might have bought it. So it doesn't make any sense to me, and I knew that it wasn't gonna happen. So so. But so- I just- I'm sorry to interrupt, guys. Can everybody go into the comments and take a look at 9to5Gamer's latest comment? <laughs> Just check it out. <laughs> okay. I'll do it. On my way. All right. Um, go ahead with what, what you're saying. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> what do you guys think about this, this PR speak? I mean, it, it's usually the public, public relations guys who do this, this uh, slick talk to make us really believe 
that uh, they actually secured an exclusive deal with with a third party like Square Enix. And uh, when I first heard it, I did I thought it was almost impossible for the fact that, that Square Enix worked so closely with Sony for so long. And uh, come to find out, two days later, it's a timed exclusive, and now it's coming to everybody. And Microsoft's just getting it first. Mm-hmm. I think that's a, a little misleading, especially at Gamescom when you hear uh, them actually saying out loud that this is an Xbox exclusive and not a timed exclusive. I think that companies like that, they need to come out on the record and, and maybe apologize for misleading consumers. That puts it, it, it can infuriate people. It can aggravate someone, a consumer who was maybe a PS4 or PS3 owner, and make them think they've got to grab it on the other consoles and come to find out it's absolutely not true. I just think it's misleading and frustrating. Well, um, you put me in this awkward position on how I made a weekly vlog that discusses exclusives, and uh, uh, the, the topic was, sorry. what does exclusive mean? <laughs> like, I discussed it literally exactly what you just said, Beasley, in the whole vlog. But anyway, I guess I'll still say my feelings on it. <laughs> but, uh, uh, pretty much, I think Sony has been guilty of it in the past, but I think as of late, Sony has cleared up exactly if something's a time exclusive, if it's, um, you know, exclusive content, like, they've been pretty specific nowadays, or they just don't mention if it's exclusive or not, they just don't state, which then you know more than likely it's not exclusive, but when you come out and say something's exclusive and it's not, that's just wrong, because it's lying. Microsoft knew ahead of time, when you, especially when you sign for a time exclusive, you're paying a con- that you have a contract, you're signing and stuff, right, the contract will let you know if you have rights to the game or not, they will also inform you if it's going to go somewhere else or not, if it's going to go to another platform. That's the whole reason why you're doing the time exclusive to begin with. So the fact that they knew that it, it's going to another platform, right, that just shows how wrong it is for them to say exclusive. And, like, Microsoft has done this plenty of times. They're still doing it for Rise. Rise has already announced it's going to be released in PC, right? And they, if you go on Microsoft and you look at their, their website, it still says Rise exclusively on Xbox One. It still says exclusively on Xbox One, even though they know for a fact it's not exclusive anymore. So regardless if they change your mind or not, the fact is it's not exclusive now, and it still lists and labels it as exclusively on Xbox One. And I don't think that's fair to consumers, because you're trying to trick them into buying your console. You shouldn't need to do that. Underhanded tactics, damn it. You could, you damn could it. say, there's nothing wrong with saying... Come into Xbox first. That still sounds good for you. It's going to you first. It gives them the reason to say, okay, I kind of like your console, and it's going to you first. I'm going to go get your console. That's it. Not saying that it's only going to your console, and that people are going to be scrambling around saying, now I have to buy something I didn't really intend on buying in the first place. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's just wrong. Like, you don't need to do that. If your console is that good, you, you don't have to do that, you know? Do you think that that could have some kind of lasting effect on consumers, bro? It already did, I think, <laughs> because people are not going to know. Like, They're not going to believe when something's exclusive anymore. When they say it's exclusive, they're not going to believe it anymore. Because now next thing is what? Quantum Break? How do you know Remedy is going to not give that game up? How do you know Sunset Overdrive is not going to stay and go with the PC afterwards? Now people are going to start questioning what really is exclusive because of this. Mm-hmm. And there's no need to do that. Because I'm looking forward to Quantum Break after what I saw. Man, me too, brother. So, me too. It's, like, that game, um, not to change subjects, but damn, that looked like uh, Infamous Second Son on heroin, man. Yeah, it did look good. <laughs> damn. It, just to get back to the exclusive stuff, too, is it's disappointing to me that they can't be honest. I don't. I, it seems like that's always the best policy. You know, if you're going to run into a problem if you're if you're consistently lying to people or or misleading people, you're going to run into a problem. People are going to get upset with you. Your brand is going to get damaged. It's a bad move. Uh, but Microsoft, I think, is a real problem. Is where they don't have their own studios anymore. It, back when the Xbox 360 launched in kind of in the heyday of the Xbox 360s, there were a lot of Xbox 360s because they were getting developed by Microsoft or getting or developers were getting funded by Microsoft. They, they don't really have that anymore. The only one I can really think of is Rare. Rare. And they're making, you know, Kinect games at this point. Hopefully not. Yeah, hopefully not, <laughs> but we'll see. You know, so I think Microsoft is in a real bad position. The only way they can get exclusives is to buy them, mm-hmm. you know, from third-party companies. And that's, that's not an enviable place to be in, and it's awful as a consumer because that, you know, Tomb Raider... 
let, let me get a better example. Let's say Sunset Overdrive. If Microsoft did not pay to get Sunset Overdrive as an exclusive on the Xbox One, then PlayStation 4 gamers could play it too because you know that they would release it on both platforms. Yeah. You know? And that's bad for consumers. It, as I don't feel as bad about it if it's actually Microsoft developing it in-house. Yeah. But when they're just buying third-party games, Can't that feels bad. That I don't like that because it, it cuts down on my choice. See, the thing is, like, don't get me wrong. I don't have a direct problem with them not buying the exclusive flat out and just... Like, I just have problems with them saying it's exclusive because you got to mm-hmm. keep in mind that Microsoft's in an awkward position that they also have to support their PCs. They have to support PC gaming as well. And that's the thing, that they have to support that as well. And that's why some of these games need to go to PC as well. But at the same time, I just think every consumer will want you to say, like, either if it's a console, if it's only on your console, say console exclusive. If it's, you know, if it's only um, on your console period, then say exclusive. But yeah. if it's going yeah, elsewhere, say it's going platform it's exclusive. exclusive. What yeah. is that? Microsoft platform exclusive. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, they it's can combine like, them. Say something like that. Let people know that to sell your brand. You know, stop, stop like saying something that isn't true. That's all I'm saying because it's getting out of hand now. Yeah. And like better on the Mac though. Like you heard it here first. Sunset Overdrive better on Mac. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Like I remember <laughs> some, some people because the consumers are confused already. I saw a Forbes uh, article that the Forbes guys talked about Destiny. How great Destiny is gonna be. He said so. Look out for Destiny, which is a PlayStation Four exclusive. I was mm-hmm. like. And this is on Forbes, like so. I read this. I'm like, wow, that guy thought it was a PlayStation 4 exclusive. Yeah. He's not the only one. People get confused when they see someone present something on stage with PlayStation. They think, oh, it's only for PlayStation. You know. Somebody in the marketing department just got their wings. (laughs) (laughs) So stuff like that happens, and I think they just got to be a little more clear to consumers. That's all. Yeah, I agree with you. There, there was a lot of the stuff that they showed at Gamescom, guys, and yeah. I, I haven't been able to see all the games because I haven't had that much time this week. But before we actually get into the games that we saw and what we thought was some of the best stuff at the show, PS4 has sold, sold through over 10 million units. What do you guys think about that? That's amazing. That is it's a insane. huge number, and they made a point of saying sold through to customers. <laughs> and they made a big point of that. Yeah. That's, that's a huge times. number. I wonder, oh, wow, that's a big number. Well, they yeah. say now that, that uh, the PlayStation 4 is on track. It's the fastest-selling console of all time right now, and it's on track to be the best-selling console of all time. So for the same period of time, they outsold the PS2, they outsold the Wii. They outsold wow. the PS2. Yeah, I mean, from the wow. same period of time. Uh, PS2 so, is top-selling console. Yeah, so right now the PS4 is scheduled from what you see now from uh, you know the last nine months to be the best-selling console of all time. And that just says a lot for today's, for this day and age in a recession and everybody's broken on unemployment and everybody's buying PS4s. Ten million, and I'm only guessing, but that's probably somewhere around twice as many Xbox Ones that have been sold through. So, I mean, it makes me wonder, do developers have a lot more to gain by doing these exclusive deals with PlayStation? It seems like they would. It'll definitely become the lead platform for development this cycle. Yeah, I mean, it it has so much more of an install base. I didn't think it would be selling that fast. I thought by now it would have slowed down. Mm-hmm. But they've mm-hmm. done well over a million sales a month if you add them all up. And, yeah, uh, this holiday season will be big, too. Yeah, I'm interested to see when they open up in China, who's going to win that battle. That's what I'm interested in. Is Sony seeing. going to China? I know Microsoft yep. is going to they're, they're going a little bit yeah. after Microsoft, but there was a poll in China to see which one they prefer to buy. And... Sony had like eighty nine percent of the vote compared to Microsoft. Hmm. Fuck the West. I, I want my pure Aryan White PS4, and I want the Aryan White Xbox One. They both look sexy to me. Dude, come on, come on over to the light side, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that shit looks good, man. They uh, they uh, announced the Sunset Overdrive um, Xbox One bundle. I'm thinking about it comes with the white Xbox One. Yeah, that, that white Xbox One looks good as hell, doesn't it? It does. I mean, I've never seen a white VCR, but if they made them, damn it. <laughs> that thing looks good. <laughs> Can anyone go over to the prices for these, uh, please? Yeah, $400 for the Advanced War. No, yeah, $500 $500 for the Advanced 500. Warfare. Yeah. $400 for the white one with uh, Sunset Overdrive. Yeah. Is yeah. that $500, too? Yeah. $400, no, no, no. right? I think that's, I think that's $400, isn't it? 
And then the only four hundred and fifty for the well, that was the they have the FIFA one, but that's Europe only. I think the, the one terabyte, which is the the COD one, right? Call of Duty. Yeah, Call of Duty. How the hell is that five hundred dollars? It's five hundred. Yeah. Why, this is why I feel Look like at that paint, man. That is a custom paint job. They got They got it. My Xbox, man. That's they got to stop. They got to <laughs> stop begging. Sell it, Briar. Sell it. Yeah, they got to stop begging these freaking uh, manufacturer companies to to put a ter- put a, a bigger hard drive. Cause when they put a bigger hard drive, they sell way more than what a hard drive is worth. They're like, hell oh, yeah. yeah. Like we'll just throw it in when you could have easily replaced it yourself. I know. Mark's you don't have like, to. You can just add one. You can add an external to the Xbox One. You're good to yeah, go. Yeah, and it's, uh, I'm just like, why is it so expensive? <laughs> yeah. Well, because look that's at that not thing. bad. When you, when you think about it now, Tenori, the, the price of storage has dropped tremendously. I remember back in the day, a PSP memory stick duo that was four, four gigabytes was $60. Hmm. Look at the Vita. I mean, Sony's still out of their mind with those prices. Yeah, those are stupid expensive. And, and so, yeah. I mean... A hundred bucks for five hundred gigabytes for the Xbox One. It's a home console. There's a lot of people who see the value in that. And on top of that, getting a custom well, it's, console. It's not a hundred dollars for. It's not a hundred dollars for five hundred gigabytes. You are also getting the game. The game, You're not custom console, connect console custom There's control. There's no connect. It's five hundred without the connect. Yay! That Yay! That's why I'm like, it's without the connect. That's the thing that's driving me crazy. Like, you cannot charge. That's a Part of the reason why people didn't like that before. But but, yeah, not but you nerdy. it's a custom system, it's a custom controller, you get the game and you get the extra storage. I th- I mean I don't think that's But too the game cool. is also digital. So it's like yeah, you're but it's a sixty dollar game. I don't know, man, because look at yeah, Sunset Overdrive. That bundle well, you know, is four hundred and are you they the season wait. pass in that bundle? What, what was that? Are they including they, the season they did that pass with Titanfall, or Advanced Warfare? I don't think there's season Titan pass included. If I remember no. correctly, there's no season. It's literally the game, the controller. It's just the, the custom look of it, the controller and that. That's mm-hmm. why, like, I was looking at it. See, they give you, like, a year. Kind of thinking they might give you a year, six months or something free for Xbox, Xbox Live. Live. They yeah. didn't do that. I think they give you one month, which is the standard one. Yeah. But they don't give you anything else. When I was looking at it, I was like, that's that's pretty expensive. It's going back but, to like what it was with the Connect. That was a real problem. It doesn't seem like a bargain, but it doesn't really seem like a ripoff to yeah, me. Yeah, I, mean, I, I gotta say that. Do you too, feel like uh, it's like a ripoff? I mean, I would have liked if they were gonna give me the game. I would have liked the actual hard copy of the game. That's the first thing. If it's mm-hmm. gonna be sixty dollars, because if you're saying that the value is sixty, I don't feel the game's value is sixty. If you're giving me a digital copy with when okay, you're buying how about it, fifty. Copy. What was that? How about fifty? I mean, they're yeah. charging sixty retail. That's why it's so because when you have. The Sunset Overdrive white bundle that's four hundred. Mm-hmm. Then you're saying the value is completely different for the game. That's, that's true. That's, that's true. That you make a strong point there. I mean, because they're basically giving you Sunset Overdrive for free. Yeah, and, and you get a white it, Xbox. You're telling me that costs obviously the paint superior. Job. Costs you hundred dollars. <laughs> Hail Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, the no price is weird. I like I like the the consoles. Though. I like the way all the look. The Call of Duty one looks a little weird, but if you like Call of Duty, that's that's right up your alley. You know what I mean? I just yeah, feel I that think... for them. I feel that they should have got it for four fifty. I really think that for the people who are fans of Call of Duty, you're pretty much taking advantage. I think. Can I, on a side note, there is at my local GameStop, there is a Gears of War Xbox three sixty on the shelf for sale. It's expensive. I want to say it's like two hundred dollars. Every time I go in there, man, oh man, I kind of want that. <laughs> Dude, the Gears of War one, the red one, right? It's like that blood red, dude, that one's awesome. It comes with two controllers, though. It comes with two controllers, the actual hard copy of the game, and it's like all like a ceramic, and it has sound effects in it. So when you turn on the game, really, it has sound effects from the game. So it's everything is sound effects of the game. So like the operating system is different. I can't, I can't buy an Xbox 360 right now, though. I mean, yeah. that's, like, <laughs> that's, that's different, because like, that was freaking sweet, dude. Yeah, like. that is cool. <laughs> okay, so uh, Xbox bundles are looking good. I, I still think the $500 bundle for, for uh, Call of Duty isn't bad because of how custom the system is, but there's a lot of games that they showed at Gamescom, guys. 2014 is a big year. What did you guys see at Gamescom 2014 that got you excited? Anybody want to go first? Well, why don't you go first? I'll Brian. go. I'll go with. Uh, let me see. I really like Scream Ride. That's a game that I hadn't seen before, and it looks it looks like a really fun and original idea. That's, Can you uh, explain that? Because I didn't see that. I heard you talk about that in your video. Okay. So it's a game. It f- from what it looks like, all we got to see is a demo. But it looks like a combination. What's that? What platform? Xbox One. 
Okay. It looks like a combination between like Roller Coaster Tycoon and Pain. Remember that game that came out for PlayStation yeah. 3 where yeah. you'd like slingshot the guy across? Yeah. It looks like a combination between that. You get to build these roller coasters, and the object of building the roller coaster is to make them as scary as possible. But I, obviously, if you go too far, people start dying, and the dying part is actually hilarious. Is you got them like just flinging <laughs> off of the, flinging off of the roller coasters, and the whole roller coaster just crashing into buildings. That's, holy shit! And the, dark. the world looks all modeled. So when a roller coaster actually hits a, a building, you know the building explodes, the roller coaster explodes. You got screaming people. And then you got these little guys with like notepads down, just taking notes. <laughs> I don't know. It was like fun. Wait, Briar, I, I'm guessing the objective is not to kill people in the game, right? It really depends on your perspective. I think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I you, would, you would kill as many people as possible. <laughs> when I used to play Pain with my kids a lot, we played that game a lot. They would just laugh hysterically for you know hours on end playing that game. And you I can see having a similar experience in this game, but you also get like kind of that roller coaster building uh, experience too. So it's a little more in depth than just flinging a guy on a slingshot, but it's yeah. also you get that same you get that same mayhem rush, you know? <laughs> yeah. Is that? Uh... Did you ever? I used to play Pain too. My kids loved it as well. Mm -hmm. and I got the the Elvira pack. Yeah. You squeeze her in that uh, slingshot, those big titties bounce out, and you just. <laughs> We're all by hey, yeah, we had all the packs for that. We yeah. bought like everything. I, I think that game ended up costing me like eighty dollars. Yeah, it's fun. It's, it it's morbid as hell, but it's fun. Is that yeah. a indie game? Is that? I don't remember who developed it. To be honest with you, who developed it? Oh. I don't remember. Are you talking about Pain? Or are you talking about Scream Ride? Scream Ride, because uh, I, I don't remember. Because like I know like this this is the first one where uh, Microsoft announced like a lot of different indie games, right? They announced mm -hmm. like a whole bunch of indie games that came to. Xbox now. Yeah. Did you uh, did you guys happen to see the the new trailer for Ori and the Blind Forest? Yeah. That looked good as hell. Yes. Like, hardcore platforming going on. Yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to probably the most on the Xbox One. That is the kind of game. It makes me feel like I'm watching a, a really good anime, but it mm -hmm. has that hardcore platforming that you know makes you feel like you're actually doing something old school as well. So it scratches the itch that I have. Yeah. Deep inside. Don't tell anybody. Yeah. Um, Scream Ride is developed by Frontier Developments, who are actually the guys that develop Roller Coaster Tycoon. Okay. Well, so shit. Makes they're, sense. they're seasoned, yeah. Yeah. What, what about you guys, Not Too Nerdy and Robbie? What did you guys see at Gamescom that got you the most excited? It can be more than one game, but just tell me what, what overall got you hyped for the future. I'd say... Quantum Break was one that looked really awesome. That, that was a stand-up for me. That game looks amazing. Yeah. So I'm kind of jealous I don't have an Xbox One for that. I don't know. I have to get one. Well, you'll get one. No worry. I saw that game too, man, and I wasn't expecting it to look that good because I haven't seen many games on the Xbox One that actually look that good and seem to perform as well as it did. The dynamic where you stop time, freeze, and all this stuff, moving around, blowing up cars. It looks really fun. It looks like there's a lot of stuff to do. Uh... It looks, if I had to pick between that game and the trailer I saw for Infamous Second Son, I'd pick that game, honestly. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it looks like that's going to be a really, a, it, it looked awesome to me, man. I really don't know what else to say. It looks like it's a lot of fun. And uh, But one thing I didn't hear anything about, though, was the show that goes along with it. Yeah, yeah I haven't heard anything about that either. Yeah, it's they supposed interview, to be. Go they ahead. interviewed a developer, and he said that, that they're, they're looking, it's going to be very action-packed, everything's on schedule, but he didn't really specify what the shows could be about or anything. Like he just said, it's 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 on schedule. That's all he said. <laughs> like okay. I was like, all right, that's cool. That's good. It's not on schedule. <laughs> <I guess. laughs> like, really selling it here, but uh... oh yeah, <laughs> that's what he said. Like he was hyping up the game a lot, and then like to ask about what about the show? Tell us about the show. He's like, it's on schedule. <laughs> like literally. <laughs> If we think about it, though, they really haven't shown any gameplay at all of that game, and they that game was um, talked about in 2012. Was that? So, uh, I think at the end of 2012 was when. Was it? Maybe it was 2013. Break? That was announced alongside the Xbox One in May 2013. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess you looked in your Rolodex. I, okay, had, but, I uh, hadn't heard of that game at all, but that trailer got me excited for it. It looks like a like a really solid you know third person shooter. But the thing I'm saying is, up until this point, all we got was that CG trailer, 
uh, that show the woman frozen in time, and nobody knew really what the game was about. And, and so boats. that's all they've been showing. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so people have been watching that and like, what the hell is this game about? And so finally they showed the game. They probably didn't want to talk about the show. They just wanted to give us the experience of what this game is going to be like and not get the two mixed up, let you get hyped about the game, then show you maybe part of the show later on, and then you get hyped about that, and that way you want them both even more. So the game looks fun as hell. I, mean, I don't fault you at all there, Robbie. That was one of the games that got my blood rushing too. Not, well, in, yeah. uh, not too nerdy entertainment. Call Bloodborne. 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 Seeing more of that is good. I heard mechanics of it. Uh, it looks very like it, the one complaint, if anything, from Demon Souls and Dark Souls is that sometimes a little too sluggish. The character yeah. movement is too slow. They speed that up, which is really good. Uh, the movement's faster. Now, there's no shield, which you think it's going to be even harder. You're going to die more, which they said, don't worry, you still die a lot. But they said that they have a parry system that if you counter, if you time it right and you counter, like, the enemy's moves, you get you gain health. So, oh, you, so you it's gain like health. a shield, except you got to have awesome timing, too. Yeah, if you do, if you practice your timing, <laughs> you'll, get, you'll get the health back. So that's cool. So the way they sound said it was, I think IGN explained it, it's sort of like a... Uh, the way, you know, uh, Destiny and Halo is, how it, like, regenerates over time. It'll regenerate if you time it properly. So, like, still the skill players will prevail and stuff like that, but, like, you'll learn how to do it throughout the game, which is cool. That means it's more open to more players now. So the, the people that thought it's too hard before, it gives you opportunity to get better and actually survive. I mean, I like the aesthetic of the game better than Demon's Souls 2. Yeah, the yeah, setting. The it's... setting, too. It looks cool, and it looks like a world I want to explore, where Demon Souls just looks so generic to me. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree. And Demon I, Souls is very fun for the hardcore. This looks like it's going to have more of the same, but that setting does seem more seamless, much faster. I think it looked great, too. But the game that got me probably the most excited out of every game that I saw at Gamescom was The Witcher 3. Really? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised, too. I watched uh, an extended gameplay um, of The Witcher, Witcher 3, and... It really touched me in the place that Skyrim touches me. Bad at. touch, bad touch. <laughs> Don't touch that place. And, uh, the way that Fallout felt as well. Of course, it's a third-person game, but I watched the whole uh, scenario play out where the main character—I don't even know his name because I never played the first two—went mm-hmm. into the woods, found this little elf-looking demon, and uh, went on a quest with this elf. And it was so seamless. The voice acting, the motion capture was done very well. The fighting is so seamless when these enemies come up, and the kind of stuff that you can do, you just seem so badass. And the, the world looks phenomenal. It really does. It looks totally phenomenal. And uh, those kind of games I'm really into, action RPGs, Dragon Age type games, and it seems like this game is hitting all the right notes. That game really got me excited. Another game that had me really hyped was watching all the Call of Duty stuff. Call of Duty. Before you move on to Call of Duty, I want to ask you a couple questions about The Witcher because I, I watched I didn't see the Gamescom trailer, but I did see the E3 trailer, and I thought it looked really interesting. I never heard it co- compared to Fallout, though. You Were you a big Fallout fan? Come on. Three, uh, Fallout 3 and <laughs> Fallout 3 uh, New, is one of my New favorite Vegas. games of all time. So, yeah, where, where do you see the comparison there? Because I'm well, not asking to be in, critical, in sense, I'm asking because I'm curious. In the RPG sense, element, right? It's an RPG open world game. Mm-hmm. It, it's not linear. You can just go do what you want to do. You can explore the world, fight enemies, level up, follow quests, do side quests. In a similar vein to Fallout. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not saying that they're the same game as far as the way that they're set up fundamentally. But I like open world RPGs. Yeah. And this is an open world action RPG. And it kind of it makes me feel kind of the same way I did playing games like the Oblivion, uh, Elder Scrolls Oblivion, where you can switch mm-hmm. to third-person mode, and you can do the same thing in Skyrim, and if you did that, these games would be probably very similar to the way The Witcher's looking. Yeah. But The Witcher just looks light years beyond those games as far as the way it looks. Yeah, and it as does. far as the, the smooth, seamless way that you can go right from you know running around and get into an action stance and do magic, it just seems like you're watching a movie. And it that's something like I have... You do whatever you want to be doing at any time yeah, you want to be doing it. Seems, I've never seen a game like that, and so... This is going to be a game changer for me. I didn't play the first two. I know they got rave reviews across the board, uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to that like hell. I love. Is that, is that fall or is that next year? I I do not know. I don't either. It is. I knew he was looking. Every year, 2015. Yeah. 2015. 
they delayed it. That was one of the games they delayed to. That's one of the October games? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's um, coming in February, actually. It's not that far away. Yeah. Um, just, like, just like Evolve. So I got a question for you. Do you, yeah. Beastly, do you, since you like that game and stuff, you thought it was cool, uh, are you like a type of person that got a collector's edition? Uh, possibly. Yeah, would it, if you got, like, cool stuff... Like, <laughs> I'm like, looking it up right now. <laughs> well, because collector's, edition. collector's edition that you get ornaments and stuff like that is only for Xbox One. They announced that people got pissed off two days ago. What? It's oh, really? Only for Xbox One. Oh, I wish I could see. I wish I could see Robbie's I'm face. Oh, I'm sure. I'm turning my webcam. I'm turning on my webcam. It's yeah. called The Witcher Three uh, Wild Hunt, right? It says that fans who there's the developers, you know, apolog- like said stuff to the fans saying that you guys are still getting exclusive content, but. It just said the Xbox One's getting like more stuff in their collector's edition, so that's all I know. They be hey, looking a lot up. of stuff too. They got a lot yeah, of things. Yeah. <laughs> like, history, uh, history repeats itself, guys. And see, now that we're here, we're in our late twenties and thirties, we can really critically, uh, you know, judge these companies. But if Super Nintendo and Genesis had stuff like DLC and, and Ultimate Editions, they yeah. would have been going back and forth like this too. I like the fact that these companies are fighting their asses off for the consumer. They're fighting for us. So even though I don't own an Xbox One right now, they could have something in the future that's going to make me say i got to have one. I'm going to have one anyway. See, but the fact that they're actually going back and forth and fighting for you know the loyalty of their consumers, I'll give you this if you join my side. It's like walking outside and you see two attractive women and both of them are standing by a door, and they both are, have on bikinis and, and and they look sexy, and one says, hey, look, if you come over here, I'll do a little something extra. Then you look at the other one, she says, she might do that, but I'll do this. you got to make up your mind, guys. The answer, actually, the answer is you walk forward because you're married. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> 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 but, uh, Touché, damn it. <laughs> yeah, I can't argue that point. <laughs> See, I'm single. I'll choose I'll just call not too nerdy. Hold on, let me call him for you. No, but like, it makes you think, though, because like you're looking and like, because this is the same developers that said that the, the, they're going to try to get 1080p for Xbox One. They don't know yet, stuff like that. So you would think that the PlayStation 4 might have the slighter edge in the way it looks on that game. But then at the same time, if you're a person who likes collector's dishes, stuff like that, you look at it and say, well, I could get more stuff for the Xbox One. Do I really care like a little bit? You know, If it's 900p as opposed to 1080p, do I really care that much? I just want to enjoy the game. They might go to Xbox One for this. That's why I, I think it's smart Microsoft move. I mean, that's something that it's not a huge thing to me. I don't think people should be upset with that because it's not like a thing that changes the game itself. It's just extra, like toys and like statues and stuff. To me, that's not a huge deal, you know. Yeah, it's, so it's really not. And buy a boat's like a baller. Come on, yeah, step up to the plate. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what else did you guys see at Gamescom that piqued your interest? We got to see more Cuphead. I, I really am excited for that game. That game looks really cool. Uh, oh, you're talking about games? I was talking about features. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm My bad. No, whichever games. Like I, I, I didn't really get to see too many games. It was just like I well, saw like, the big ones. I didn't get to see too many. So that's why I'm kind of looking forward to you guys there, explaining so yeah. I can understand what there, games were I missed. There was something that Sony's doing that I'm kind of getting fed up with, a little agitated. Now, we got The Last of Us. It was the best-selling game of the month, and um, you know I'm, I'm really having a lot of fun with that game because it's The Last of Us. But Sony, they're doing a lot of rehashing of old games, and uh, I know why they're doing it. We know why they're doing it to attract those people who didn't have an opportunity to play, people who are coming from the Xbox ecosystem, people who may uh, may not have ever played these games before. They're remaking Journey for the PS4. They're remaking Tearaway for for the Vita. It's called Tearaway Unfolded with new no, functionality. PS4. Yeah, I'm talking about Tearaway for the Vita is being remade for the PS4. Mm. Oh, yeah. um, and uh, I think it's fine for the consumers who um, who are coming into this new ecosystem and they've heard about these games. Of course, Journey was uh, nominated for Game of the Year. Tearaway is like one of the best Vita games. And for those people who never played it, that's fine. But I feel like there have been people here on the ground floor with Sony for, throughout the whole PS3 lifespan. And I think those consumers need to get a little something too, rather than have a library of all the games that we already own. That Sony should be focusing on those consumers that help build this ecosystem as well. And um, like I said, I don't think there's anything wrong with them, you know, remaking and remaking these games over and over again. But at the same time, I think they should be working twice as hard to keep the consumers who made the PlayStation what it is today happy. 
But yeah, they're, they're remaking these older games, these PSN titles. What do you guys think about these remakes? Sick of them. I don't, to be honest with you, I don't think it's a problem. I don't see a problem with more games. Because you gotta keep in mind that not everyone's like us. Like a lot of us, we keep our old consoles and stuff like that. A lot of people get rid of it. You're adding more games to a library of a system that you probably started fresh from. A lot of people got rid of their old ones and got the new ones. And when there's a lack of games in the new ones at the moment, I understand that's what you're saying. You should add more things, but you're adding to the library regardless. Sony has yeah. a lot of studios. So games like Journey like it was played, but at the same time, if you saw how many people played the game compared to how many people own the PS3, not too many people did. So now you're bringing it to PS4, and that's that. Now if you're looking at a game like uh, Tearaway, like Tearaway is another one, didn't sell too much because the Vita isn't doing too well, and you're pouring it over to a console for the first time it's ever been to a console. And obviously since it's different buttons, it's going to be a, a way different experience because it's not, I don't know how they're going to do it, to be honest with you, how they're going to make the experience <laughs> different, but like th it's going to be a different experience. So, you know, I don't think option is a bad thing because the great thing is it's you don't have to buy it, and I think that's mm -hmm. that's a important thing that people have to remember because anytime they hear news that a new game's out or that's rehashed, like you don't have to buy it, and like it's really people that didn't get a chance to, or people that are interested in buying it for a second time and see what it, what's the difference between it, you know? Yeah, I mean, something like uh, Resident Evil with they they're gonna remake the remake of Resident Evil. Yeah. But a lot of people haven't played that game ever, you know? Yeah. Like, my kids are too young to have played the remake of that game. So, like, it's perfect for them. They'll even, like, play the first Resident Evil remake. I didn't even think about that. Like, the, the remake remake. The young kids. <laughs> like, I didn't even think about that, too. There's other kids that are just now coming up to start playing games now that never played. I didn't even think about that. It's a good point. Like, yeah, it's a lot of different people, new gamers every day. So, yeah. You know, I, don't, I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with having more games in your library. I just think that, and I'm not saying Sony needs to just give us free the the games we've already bought for free because Sony, I gotta say, they give us a lot of free stuff. Uh, I just feel like for every one of those games that they're pushing out that's a remake, they need to have two new games. You know, for the people who've been here. That's all I'm saying. But um, I think they're they got a pretty strong strategy. Uh, they're pulling consumers like mad right now and. Uh, you know, that's my, my thought on the, the whole remakes of the old PSN games. The thing is, though, I'm kind of impressed at how many new games they announced just at Gamescom. And, like, the funny thing is, like, it was so subtle. Like, you didn't really get a chance to realize until after. Like, I felt like, you know, I clearly felt once again Microsoft, again, had, like, a better conference. They felt like it really? was closer this time. I thought it was closer. But I think Microsoft had a bigger punch. But then I, when I got to stop to think about it, like more time to think about it, I thought part of the reason was the natural rise of Tomb Raider. Mm -hmm. And like, and then I started realizing the stuff Sony announced in a subtle way, that how many games that they announced or features that they announced. And I'm like, wait a second. And then all of a sudden that Silent Hills. a ton Hills, more stuff. It was a ton mm -hmm. more. Yeah, and then at the Silent Hills, too, was another thing that they snuck by in a, in a conference that you have to figure out days later. Yeah, and so, you can play the PT demo as like right after the conference. Yeah, so like it's things that it was just in a subtle way that they did things, and to me, like then I realized how much better their conference was that they didn't show it as well. It was a lot of secretive stuff. For they you had to go out. so fast though. Yeah, yeah, because there's so many things to go over, and I'm, <laughs> I'm excited to see them like and now like show more stuff of this. Like, and they started to show footage too, which is impressive too. They We're started to show footage for things. So. Yeah, Question. Xbox, the, every game they seemed to dwell on forever because they didn't have as many games to show. But Sony, they had to pump it out. Yeah, like they, they had tons things. of indies. Yeah, they, they had, had a ton of indies. indies. They were showing brand new games that I've never heard of before. They had the, you know, the PlayStation, the new features in 2.0. Like, yeah, they had a lot share. of stuff going on. Hellblade. Oh, man. You mean Heavenly Sword, Sword too? Yeah. Yeah, I'm down yeah, with that. I like Heavenly Sword. Sword. It's in a different setting, though, so I, I don't know. Well, it's it, it looks like it's her sister. And yeah. If you think about it, uh, Heavenly Sword, Hellblade, they're total polar opposites made by the same developer. These games have something to do with each other. And, and look at the characters. They look like they're in the same setting, the same world. So until they come out and definitively say they have nothing to do with each other, I'm calling that damn game uh, Heavenly Sword 2. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I liked Heavenly Sword. Oh, I love that game. Yeah, it was cool. What I, I, what'd you get, did you guys get to see Rhyme at all? No. no. Okay, so that looked like a cross between uh, Zelda Wind Waker and Shadow of the Colossus. Like, the aesthetic was kind of Wind Waker-esque, 
but the the scope of it looked like Shadow of the Colossus, where just like enormous kind of structures and this huge sense of scale. Definitely check out a uh, trailer for this because it it doesn't look like any other game. <laughs> You know, What's the game called again? Other, rhyme, R-I-M-E. <laughs> Wait, why does it sound familiar? It doesn't look like any other game. Wait, I just compared the two. Yeah, other you know, it's it, just to just to explain it, but it doesn't. It really, it doesn't look like anything I've ever seen. It really looks cool. The only thing they didn't show is like what you're going to actually do during the game. Oh, yeah. This concerns me. How about uh, that new cardboard box technology that Hideo Kojima was showing? <laughs> I mean, hey, man, I would have been confused. I would have got killed. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> I want to get oh, killed. Yeah, they showed that E3. That was funny, though. He, like, he did more to it, but it's the same thing. He also announced Steam that it's going out for PC. Oh, he did? He announced Metal Gear Solid 5 is coming out to PC as well, and he did it using a box. One of the boxes, he turned the character around, Snake, and it said Steam on it. Oh, really? <laughs> it, was, it was pretty sweet. He did that at Sony's press conference. I bet they, they love that. No, it wasn't at Sony's press oh, conference. He did it like somewhere else. Now. <laughs> Not at Sony's press conference. I got a question for you guys because a majority of you guys own Vitas. Were you guys shocked to see that there was nothing shown for the for the PlayStation Vita? No. Not really, to be honest. <laughs> I, I think that, to be honest with you, from what I heard, there's so many things that they have to go over. They couldn't do it. They showed a lot on the show floor. About the Vita again, there's like another like six games that they showed. I don't even remember the names of them, but they showed like six games, six new games that they didn't even introduce yet. But they didn't have time to announce it on stage. But that's because they're gonna announce more of it during the Tokyo Game Show. So like, okay, well cool. that's good, and that's music to my ears. Uh, you know, I listen to other podcasts. None of them as good as us. No, uh, but um, yeah, I said it right course. at the beginning of the show. We're the best <laughs> yeah. gaming the podcast. Universe. Yeah. In the the thought game. show. Do you think I didn't uh, like research this? Yeah, I, I think you had a lot of fact too. But uh, a lot of other, of uh, a lot of people out there uh, have been insinuating that the Vita's dead, and I just refuse to believe it. Um, the thing is, something I've been thinking about: we don't have too many Vita games out in circulation. There's not like a ton of them, and you get two free Vita games every month. So even if they slow down production of the games. It'll probably take two years, three years tops, and then you'll have every Vita game just from PlayStation Plus. New games are coming out, though. I'm playing Rogue Legacy Crossplay. I think that's a really cool feature. If you have a PlayStation 4 and you have a um, Vita, you know you get to play it on both consoles for one price, and your save transfers between the two. I think it's a great companion to the PlayStation 4. Uh, even though, yeah, maybe it's not getting AAA titles, but I don't want to play it like for a AAA title. I just want to play it you know, before Great. I go to bed or something. Yeah. Well, I'm playing Fez on mine right now, and I gotta say, uh, to nine to five gamers, that game is fucking sick. Kate's yeah. back there playing that's it cross, right now. That's cross play as well, right? So you're saying yeah. it goes back and forth. Yeah, that's and uh, they actually gave it out on PS4 and Vita with a uh, PlayStation Plus this month. Yeah. So it's it, it's a great value. Yeah, I think awesome. that we we have to see because like when PlayStation Now comes out too, I think the Vita might be very very handy to play with some of those games portable. PlayStation Now, absolutely. That's, that's going to be thing. wonderful. Like, that's, that's another thing. You can play games like that portable, the PlayStation Now, that's going to revive that system as well because on the go, you really can't, as much as they advertise for your cell phone, on the go, it's going to be hard to do on a cell phone because there's no buttons. So if you could tell me I could bring my Vita wherever and play it, as long as I have the internet connection, then I'll do that, you know? Especially once they bring in the back catalog to PlayStation Now. Like, imagine playing like through all the old Final Fantasy games on your Vita or... Uh, you know, Chrono Cross came out for PlayStation 1, right? You know, uh, like old old games like that would be perfect on the Vita. Well, put it this way. If you have a Vita, you could play your games on a Vita, and then you could go home. If you have a Vita or the PlayStation TV, whatever they want to call it, then that's revive each other because you could play that anywhere you want to. So, like, there's plenty of different ways that they'll interact with each other later on. So I think they're waiting till they're officially introduced to PlayStation now where it's completely out, and then... It's show like a whole system what the stuff you could do with it. I mean, I don't know. We'll see though. Anybody who has a Vita right now, who has a Vita? Not too dirty. Do you have one? Yes, I yeah. have a Vita. Robbie, do you have one? Yeah, I have a Vita. So, does anybody regret having one? No, no. I play yeah. like when I'm. I mostly play when I'm like laying down. Like when yeah, I. I do the same thing. <laughs> like when I can't go to sleep. Yeah, I'm just laying down for a while. You know, just chilling for a while playing a game. That's usually how I get my games played a lot on the Vita. You know. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, I, I'm the same I, I, way. I, I, I keep it on my bedside table, and that's kind of where... Every once in a while, I'll bring it downstairs if I have to watch a shitty movie with my wife. 
When I watch TV, so I'm watching sports games, so I might be playing both and looking back and forth and playing it. And yeah. then, you know, so. Play a little MLB The Show while you're watching a baseball game. <laughs> uh, a, a, a little yeah. a pro tip. Did you guys know that uh, Japan actually stopped production and selling the, the PSP? The old PSP mm-hmm. is totally done, dead in the grave. That's because they're probably sold out. <laughs> it makes me feel super sad, though, to think about it. I had so much fun with my PSP, man. I still break it out from time to time and play it. And it, uh, I think I've had more fun on my PSP than my Vita, for sure, because oh, yeah. they've got so much, so many more games. Yeah. But, yeah, that, that's done. Just the ergonomics of the PSP were better, too. Like, yeah. I, I find the Vita to be uncomfortable. That's because they try to make it lighter. They try to make it smaller for people, and yeah. to be honest, you, something like that needs more weight to it. And like, it needs to be a little clunkier, in my opinion. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, I might build something with my uh, expert foam technology. Hey, did oh. you guys uh, hear? <laughs> yeah, I, I want to see your expert foam technology. Okay, <laughs> it was as good as your uh, knockoff of the Morpheus. And, hey, uh, the FBR headset worked. God damn it. <laughs> I want to see that. <laughs> Did you guys uh, hear that uh, that uh, Microsoft got a deal with um, with uh, the makers of Evolve for them to get the beta early, kind of the same way that uh, uh, PS4 got the Destiny beta? Yeah, I'm um, excited for that beta. Yeah, it's coming in January uh, to Microsoft consoles before every other system. So this is something that's going to persist. This is going to be the way it's going to be for a while. Yeah. These big AAA titles that everybody wants. Who's willing to pay, the, you know, the extra ducats to get it a week in advance or a month in advance? This is just going to be the way it is. I at think that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at least now that we know with this new PR talk, Microsoft can say that every Call of Duty DLC is a Microsoft exclusive. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And they will. <laughs> yeah. I'm, sure. I'm disappointed about. That you know, I, I've made videos. I've talked about it on the show before. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. It's so all good. Of, uh, Call of Duty, though. You guys want to talk a little bit about Call of Duty? Wait, yeah. Before we go, uh, one last feature we didn't yeah, mention. Yeah. That's a pretty big feature. Yeah. Was uh, the PlayStation feature? Oh yeah, the how you share. Can play. What do you guys think about that? What's it called again? You the PlayStation play. or something? Yeah. yeah. The PlayStation Share. Uh, it has a 60 minute limit, but now you can actually uh, be playing your games. With this update, you'll be able to play your games and pass your controller virtually to another PlayStation user. Who doesn't sure. have the game. Yeah. So if I'm playing, let's say let's say I just bought Destiny and Beastly Gamer doesn't have it yet, I, I would, in theory, be able to allow him to play it mm-hmm. using this feature. And I think that's cool. And all that lag will get you killed quick as hell, too. Well, it's, we don't know how it's going to work yet, because they never specify it's going to stream yet. So it might, yeah. they might have you download it, and that, you know, I mean, they might have you download it, and you're playing it there. Like, it's going to stream what the person's doing to you, but you might be moving, like, on your side normally, and whatever happens to your side might stream to the other person. So I don't know if they're doing that way, or they're going to use the PlayStation Now yeah. service. So, I would imagine PlayStation Now for this. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they could do that, but at the same time, they might want to advertise downloading the game and say, if you want to buy this now, all you have to do is uh, just pay, pay for, for it, it, and then you <laughs> keep it, and you already download it. So I think that it makes more sense to have it. Uh, and we just lost Not Too Nerdy Entertainment. Let me finish <laughs> yeah. that. It, it makes a lot more sense if you have it inside your knapsack. Yeah, sure. They also said that uh, you'll be able to upload to YouTube in the in System 2.0. Yeah, uh, that's supposed cool. to come with with the YouTube uh, app with the PS4 because that was something that the PlayStation 4 never had, and I was kind of frustrated. There's no YouTube app on the PlayStation 4. No. Nope. Uh, or, or an MP3 player, and and those are two things I use heavily on my PS3. That's why I kept my PS3 in the living room after I bought the PS4. And then when I upgraded to this new TV that has everything on it already, I took my PS3 back to my room. So, yeah, there's no YouTube app, and so this functionality, the sharing functionality, is going to come with this app. So that's a, another good thing to look forward to. Sony, they're doing good. They're not up on everything, though. They really need an MP3 player. Uh, you need to be able to uh, store well, they're your DLNA support. That's actually for the Xbox One, isn't it? Oh, okay. All yeah. right. I just saw it in your notes. Yeah, yeah, that's Xbox One, D- DLNA support. Okay. Hey, it looks like 
We should have two. And look, one's smiling and one's laughing. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is officially too much nerdy. Yes. <laughs> I guess they didn't sign up for last I don't know how to do that. I can't tell which one's the nerdiest. I think it does it automatically. All right, cool. Yeah, oh, it's it, nerdier. We got, yeah, uh, we got an official release date for the PlayStation TV in uh, really? North America. Yeah, it's October 14th. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Anybody plan on picking that up? I know I'm picking that up. I am. Up. Yep. I am it's for sure. pre-ordered for a while. Yeah. Now, does that come in one color? Does that come in white to match my new Aryan white PS4? <laughs> I hope so. Pure blood. <laughs> See, nobody's perfect. I got white palms. <laughs> Is there anything else we want to talk about about uh, games yes. before we move on to uh, Call of Duty? Uh, well, this is this is not game related, but this is something that I think affects everybody in some kind of way. Ron some Williams. big news happened this week, uh, and I, I put it in our notes. This guy has been a, a part of my life since I was a child, and uh, Robin Williams passed this week, and uh, to me that hit me like a ton of bricks, man. I, I've seen all his movies. And... You asshole! How are you gonna use that music? That's, that's not, awkward. Yeah, that's that not was... appropriate for <laughs> Man, what are you going to play when I die? Um, but yeah, Robin Williams passed away, and, and I think that his death actually affected a lot of people because his his work has brought a lot of happiness into the world. Um, and not many people can say that. He's made many people smile over the years, and uh, he uh, was manically depressed, and uh, his wife just came out and said he was diagnosed with, I forget which terminal illness, recently that actually uh, uh, infused his will or lack thereof to live. And, um, yeah, Robin Williams passed away this week, so for those who didn't know that, which very few probably didn't. Yeah, that was sad. That was sad news. Mm-hmm. Call of Duty! Yeah. Segway. <laughs> <laughs> Where you get to kill people. Much more fun than suicide. Yes. Yeah, they showed a lot of the multiplayer for this new Call of Duty, man. What did you guys think about this? I know, Briar. Briar, I know you got a lot of stuff to say. I, I, I'm really excited see. about it. I, I was I was pretty lukewarm on uh, Advanced Warfare going into seeing this trailer. I I saw what they were doing with the si- the single player, and I was not impressed. Uh, I also think that they gave awful demos of the single player, <laughs> like yeah. so slow and like methodical. These guys were playing it that it the game looked like it was like a like a clinical lesson in how to shoot people. It's terrible. <laughs> but uh, the multiplayer looks cool. I mean, it looks like a departure for Call of Duty. Uh, it looks like it's going to be really kinetic. I think the connection for this game is going to be you have to be so good, though. It's going to have to have, like, the best net code that Call of Duty's ever had because there are going to be guys coming at you from every angle. Uh, they said that the bullet, like, the actual time to kill is going to be a, bit, a little bit slower, even slower than... Uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 2, which is good. I mean, that always increases the skill gap of the games. You're actually going to have to keep that weapon trained on a guy uh, and continue to fire. Mm. All that jumping around and the boost strafing, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a high-octane game, I think. I'm waiting for the, the voice of reason here, the voice of the, voice of the people. I see him nodding his head. No, I mean, I think the game's going to be fun. I, I'm going to get the game. I'm getting the game, everyone. Wow. Wow. Um, I officially wow. gonna get the game. I think it's gonna be fun. I'm not taking that away from. Him. But at the same time, I think that this might be the most unbalanced Call of Duty <laughs> ever made. And I'm gonna tell you what. why. Why? Yeah. A. The first thing is the cloaking is gonna get out of hand a lot. So That's I watched get- the video. It looks like you can only cloak for about five seconds, and you only get it once per life. Here's the problem. Out of hand because the jumping as well. The jumping is infinite, and they were complaining about some people have played it, which means the minute you touch ground again, you, get, you keep going. There's yeah. no delay in that. That's going to get out of hand. That's unbalanced already. Yeah, you, you, can, you can do the same thing in Destiny, game. though. Huh? You can do the same thing in Destiny. You can do infinite jumps, and it's not a problem yeah, in Destiny. but Destiny isn't quick. Like, like now, if you see the what they're doing, there's different ways to go side to side. I don't know if you yeah, saw it. Like, there's different, strength, there's yeah. different things you could do when you set up in your perks. Now, you can straight oh, forward, back, left, and right. Oh, I forgot my notes. <laughs> All right, now I got her here. Um, another thing to return that I love it. I like this. You know, this is the reason why I'm getting it back. It's quick scope. I know a lot of people don't like that, 
Now, let me tell you what I was seeing on everyone's video. I saw so many different people playing the game. Mm -hmm. There's people jumping in the air, quick scoping two people before they even land. Mm -hmm. How is that even possible in the game? How are you going to do that? <laughs> the guy, not only that, he cloaked, jumped up in the air, quick scoped two people. He was cloaked. And then so you can pull out your pistol and one shot people. And, and on top of it, that's another thing that's going to kill me in this game, that the fact that this game is going to be heavy upon people running around, cloaking, shotgunning, and jumping from side to side. I think your shotgun's going to be the best friend in this game because you're not going to need any other weapon. You're, you can literally do one-shot kills in this game, and it seems like, just like Brian Rivers says, that like it'll take a couple shots to kill people with normal guns, but I'm thinking the shotguns and all those other close-range guns are going to be very effective in this game. So the, you, the videos we've seen so far are still... You know, this is not the final weapon balancing. Mm -hmm. You no, know, we it, saw well, I saw that sonic shotgun in a lot of people's videos, and it looked like it was like a across the map kill. Yeah, there's you know, some was, across the map. There, it just yeah. looks so unbalanced right now. Like, yeah, I am like that's why I said I've never seen a Call of Duty look so unbalanced to begin with. Like that's the thing. Like it looks like they're gonna be spending months trying to balance it before adding anything to it. That's the thing that's to me. Why I say it's going to be the most unbalanced Call of Duty is because right now it looks so unbalanced and they didn't even start yet. They only have, like, not to mention the weapons you could get in the game where it drops. Like, I saw your video, Briar Rabbit. Like, those drops, when it drops, you could get, like, a certain weapon no one else could get that could be overpowered or whatever. Yeah, that, I have a problem with that. Is that. I don't like that. There's so many features in this game that's just written all over that it's going to be so unbalanced. You're going to get people that are going to find ways to get drops that are not supposed to get, and they get it anyway. And they're going to have a weapon that no one else could get that you can't I, even imitate. It's I, a I, lot of stuff, man. <laughs> I, I agree with you, but see, the thing is, They've been working on this game and, and really fine-tuning it now for almost three years. So I'm thinking that they've already heard these arguments and seen these arguments, and by the time the game comes out, it'll be playable, and a lot of people have a lot of fun. Now, That's what scares me, because it's not balanced now. From yeah. where everyone's playing it, it's so unbalanced now as we speak. I'm talking about this is people that are invited. There's YouTubers invited. There's people like for marketing. There's people all over that are invited, and they got to play. There's so many different footage online if you see them play like, there's footage. This is the actual game that they're planning to release is what it is. They're going to tune it and tweak it, but that's a lot of tweaking to do because they have as much weapons as they say they do. That's a lot of work to do. Yeah. It's uh, so the the weapons are going to – there's going to be a base weapon. Like, let's say you, you want to use the AK-12. You can get a supply drop uh, that may have another version of the AK-12 in it that maybe it, it automatically includes a silencer that you can't take off or a drum magazine that you can't take off, and it may have slightly different stats than the standard AK-12, right, that anybody could use. The problem here is that the only way you can get that weapon is through a random supply drop. There's no way you can earn that weapon or create it yourself, uh, which I think is a problem because if that weapon turns out to be overpowered, you got a real problem here because only certain players are going to have access to it. And then what if they decide to make it like, hey, you can buy supply drops for $5. Mm. Then all of a sudden it becomes a pay-to-win game. And I, That's a bummer. I just feel like they could have prevented that easily by not letting guns be dropped. Everything else, yeah. different, different material, different clothing, different cool things maybe. Camo. Your, yeah, your gun might be decorated a certain way. Maybe that, but don't do a special gun. Like it just, it just bugged me out when I heard that. I'm like... Yeah. This is sounding not too balanced whatsoever. Right. Yeah, that's going to be a problem. A, Go ahead. I got a question for you guys. When I first started watching the multiplayer, the reveal, I was really excited about it. And at the end of the reveal, after the whole thing went off, I felt like I watched the real version of Titanfall. Did you guys see any uh, you know, comparisons between the two games? I, I can see the comparison, mean? but I don't agree with it. Because Titanfall was much more about... Uh, like that parkour and run, wall running and kind of this much very huge maps with multiple buildings. The, the Call of Duty Advanced Warfare looks like it's going to be a smaller experience, smaller maps. I mean, the, the maps have to be big enough to use the jumps and the boosts on, but it looks like it's going to be a much well, more the, the, focused like the space, experience. Like the space elevator uh, stage is level on top of level, mm -hmm. and all you're doing is double jumping the whole time. Mm -hmm. I think some of those levels are really big. Um but what I mean by that is the, the game was very fast-paced and, and very uh, kinetic, and uh, it just felt like Titanfall. The same angles, the jumping, and uh, 
but then again, it felt complete. Like, you get all this extra stuff, all these weapons, all this customization, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm sure on some level, the developers over at um, Titanfall are looking at this game and saying, damn, we should have we done it more like this, is what I mean. They would have needed more time. They, uh, can you compare it, though? It is similar in a way. Like, they took a lot of ideas from it, and, like, you can definitely tell, like, when they jump, the double jump, but, like, the... Uh, Titanfall, you know, has, like, their wall running and stuff like that, like, you parkour elements. This mm-hmm. has wall jump. So, like, you bounce off the wall. You could jump off the wall really quickly and get back. There's mm-hmm. also a spot where in Titanfall that you could hang on the wall. Like, you could hang on the wall. You could do a similar move on uh, Call of Duty that they're showing on IGN that you could do, a hang, like, a wall hang to get someone from a, a certain angle of the wall. Um, uh, they have the big mech suits too. Um, yeah, they have another the, another suit. Yeah. I think that's a kill streak, right? Is yeah, that right, right? Yeah. that's a certain kill streak. Apparently, you um, can snipe guys out of that. You can headshot guys out of that. Oh, yeah, shit. it's a lot of different <laughs> things you can do for them, which is it's cool. But I, I I don't know. Like a lot of people are saying it too. Like these people play all the time. Like I don't know. Like I saw like people on IGN. A lot of people that play Call of Duty a lot. And, like they're like they're saying that it it seems. To have balance issues right now, and I've seen it. You could clearly see it right now. It definitely has balance issues. I hope that they move quickly. The only thing is, like, the the weird thing, it's not a good thing when it's unbalanced, and you're not really talking about the weapons itself being unbalanced. That's the thing that's kind of scary. We're not even getting to the weapons yet. Usually that's what they take time fixing, trying to make sure the weapons are balanced. We're talking about the features in the game that's not the weapons. So that's what's scary about it. Do you know what I mean? That's what I meant about, like, I don't know what they're going to do now because the features that they added combined, you're going to see how people are going to use them combined to, to get an advantage. There will be like holy trinities where you're going to have like certain combinations that are just going to make you so much faster than everybody else. That Yeah, and don't forget, we're, we're talking about people with basic controllers. And what about people with scuff controllers or things oh, yeah. that are customized? Scuff controllers like, are going to be huge on that, That's what I'm saying. Like, there's so many things you could do in this game already. Imagine when you have a controller souped up to do it. So that's the thing that I'm talking about that. You're, yeah. you're not even talking about weapons yet. And One of the boost out. functions is that you actually have to hit the down arrow on the control pad. Right? <laughs> really? Yes. Yeah, yeah, so you, you, you have to remove your your thumb from the movement stick and actually hit that button. So if you map that to a paddle, <laughs> like, think of the advantage there. Dude, yeah. When they said that, oh, I think uh, Alfredo said that at IGN, I, I started like, I'm like, oh my god, that means someone's either going to customize themselves or buy controllers customized because... The way they try to balance it, it's making it awkward for you to do it, but mm-hmm. it's not going to be awkward if you program it to do it. Like, right, you'd be like... <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. And then now the, the score streaks are also customizable, so there's going to be definitely best balance issues in there. Like, yeah. You yeah. Can, uh, I, when I saw that with, with the uh, the turret gun, and then they, they took away just the regular bullets and added bombs... And then, yeah. he add, he, then he added another customization, which allowed him to pick up the turret and run around the stage with the turret shooting bombs. Yeah. Holy shit. And Danger Close is in this game. Yeah. So the, you'll be able to uh, like up the efficiency of your explosives. And, and, and on top of that, certain kill streaks, which allow you to jump into like helicopters or, or uh, planes and shoot the, at the map, your teammates can actually jump in there with you and join you and take out the, the rest of the team. That's a cool feature. Yeah. I think that's cool because I don't think it'll be that effective. I think they'll be like spotting people for you or stuff like that. But what it does is it gives people who don't have the ability to get those score streaks th- themselves the the ability to actually, you know, get experience, into experience it for, you know, like there's a lot of people that never used a chop, chopper gunner in uh, Black Ops 1. They just never, they were never got a score streak that big. So that piece of the game is just inaccessible to them. Now in, in Advanced Warfare, they'll at least ha- be able to participate in it somewhat. I think that's cool. Here's the problem, though, I see. is like I don't have a problem with it, per se, because I think this Call of Duty is leaning more towards the fun side than competitive side. I think it's starting to lose competitive edge. All the stuff they're adding, mm-hmm. it's it seems like they're making it user-friendly, where you could jump in, and there's so many things that you could customize to help you out in the game, as opposed to certain rules are in place already, like you get like scores for your set and everything customizable. It seems like, I don't know, I still feel like it seems more like it's, I know it's going to take some of the skill to do some of the things, but I think like they're trying to aim to more of like people that just have fun instead of just being just skill based. Like I, I, I don't think see as good, much though. competitive. Isn't that the point? Like, instead of catering to the small group yeah, of players who are competitive. I meant the competitive 
part about it. Like I thought that's what Call of Duty went to. Like it all it was all about competitive nature. But now it's like this game. It seems like it's pulling away from Timefall in the sense that they're trying to be accessible to everyone, and that didn't work out for Timefall in the end, or at least so far it didn't. But yeah, you know I mean that's why it's iffy. I, that's why I'm like wondering. I mean. He did do enough for like, me. Are you saying that there won't be enough skill gap to keep better players? I, I don't know because I think that's a balance. That we have to see after they balance it. Okay? I have yeah. to see after they balance it, will it be enough skill gap? Because right now, for the way it is, it doesn't seem like that. Because you see people just like the way it's being played right now, it does not seem like that much skill gap because there's so many flaws in it. There's people who run around, you can't do anything, there's one around the shotgun, you're going to kill people. Like, it's certain things that just kind of unbalanced at the moment. But, like, I think that's something you have to wait in the first month and a half to see what, what happens after a month and a half. Like, how do people adjust to it and if there is a skill gap or not. <coughs> so I really can't answer that, honestly, right well, now. But, one yeah. thing that, that I saw them do that I think was great is they, they kind of make the game unique to each player, kind of the same way they did with Black Ops 2. Black Ops 2 had the pick 10 system. Here you get the pick 13 system. And you can put those 13 perks into whatever you want. I'm so just gonna have may... the coolest freaking UAV you have ever seen. Get the hell out of here! <laughs> Thirteen <laughs> perks on my UAV, man. This thing's gonna have oh, all sorts of cool radar options. Flashing lights and all that stuff. <laughs> Stall for power. <laughs> gonna have reverse. That, that was <laughs> <laughs> that was something in Black Ops 2 that I really liked and I miss uh, in in Call of Duty Ghosts was that my loadout actually felt like me. And I felt like my loadout was tailored to me, and sometimes Kate and I would switch loadouts. Yeah. And I, I look at her and say, how the hell can you play this? And she felt like that was her own identity, playing Call of Duty Black Ops 2. And so the fact that you got the pick 13 system is going to bring that back, and I think it will make it better for everybody as well. I like I like the ghost system better. I think it's more it's more customizable, and the, the perks in it don't seem as overpowered. Like in Black Ops 2, lightweight... Uh, what was it? Focus? Yeah. There was like three perks that everybody used. Lightweight was a must. Everybody used lightweight in Black Ops 2 because the it gave you such an advantage over everybody else. Like you had to use lightweight in that game. And uh, I feel like in Ghost there's more customizability in there. To each his own, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not that I'm, I'm, not, I'm not bashing Black Ops 2. I love Black Ops 2. But oh, I know what, you, I know what you're saying. Uh, I, I actually prefer got the more out Ghost, of Ghost systems. Experience. I got. Um, there's more customizability. What the I think. hell is this? I'm sorry. You don't, you don't pull it up. Not, uh, not no, no, no. Uh, Enrique actually sent me a video. Uh-huh. He tweeted me a video of uh, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Someone threw like a flash grenade, it looked like. Uh-huh. And a flash grenade curved around the corner. And uh-huh. it went around okay. and bent it over and it came into the room. <laughs> the like, you know, dead serious. Like, <laughs> dude, it's totally awesome. Don't Share with me. I want right to see that. <laughs> dude, that thing is so awesome, man. And he he highlighted the exact area where it happened in the video. So, wow, I, don't know. I, I I think they got a lot of Palestine issues. Oh dude. yeah, totally. <laughs> you know, what is it sounds fun. They've had three games. It's the first time they've had three years to make a game. And yeah. we're still looking at this stuff. That's kind of sad to me. Hopefully, just, this stuff worked out. I think because the fact that they got like a, a, a chart, and they're like, let's add this, let's add this, let's add this, and not realize that the more you add, the more you gotta figure out about balancing. Because they usually takes them a while. Like I saw your video, Briar, and like you explained that it takes a while for them to balance and normally with a certain amount of weapons. And now they add a whole bunch more weapons, and now you gotta worry about them balancing it there. Like, They're still making changes to Call of Duty Ghost balancing yeah, weapons. It's, it's like, I, I just don't understand why they're making it this hard for us. I understand that you did ideas, but I feel like some of the features were added later on. Like, oh, we have to be able to double jump and stuff like that. When I'm pretty sure when Typhoon came out, they I don't know this was planned to have the double jump of floating and all that stuff. It can't be. It can't be that late because they had to design all those and multiplayer the, levels around I, it. I have a feeling... That oh, man. they're like they decide yeah let's let's uh, because you gotta keep in mind they they must have got word about this before it, we yeah sure Titanfall. right like That's we knew like, about Titanfall probably what almost two years ago at this point right yeah they probably knew like a year and a half two years like you know what I mean so like but still like you gotta imagine that some of these features that they they imitated it like it's clear as day that they imitated they had, they put their own spin because it's still Call of Duty feel to it you know there's still a reason why you want to stay on the ground. As opposed to jump and jump is more of a defense mechanism than it is an attack plan. 
You know, like you want to boost jumping is going to be nasty though. Yeah, or the, uh, I'm sorry, the boost strafing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you get good at that, you're going to be hard to kill. Yeah. Oh yeah. It just well, seems like it's going to be a lot of fun. Regardless. Controller gets good at it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you got a scuff controller, you're going to be hard to kill. <laughs> <laughs> just wait till I get that quick scope, Briar. That's yeah. why I'm coming back. You got me back because of quick scope. I'm going to be quick scoping everyone. They're going to be yeah. pissed. There, this is going to be a this is going to be a really awkward time for everybody um these next few months because you got Destiny, you got Call of Duty. How are you going to weigh those two? I mean, well, I got two be... months to play Destiny, and then Call of Duty comes out, and I'll play that for a couple months. I definitely got to get good at it before Christmas, and then beat the snot out of all the Christmas noobs, and then, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Evolve comes out after that. <laughs> but you got you got Destiny, and then you got about you got about twenty games uh, in between that, <laughs> and then you got Call of Duty. So you got twenty games before that. There uh, are some games that are coming out in October still that look really good to me. Yeah, so that's why like I feel like it's not fair to my uh, savings account. Um, but like it has to be done. I have to buy these games. Shit. You think that's bad? It's not fair to my kids' Christmas. <laughs> Here I get you a used copy of Destiny. Yeah. <laughs> and a candy apple. Basically, basically, what you do is you buy the games you want now, like, and then you give it to them and say, "Open, it's open. You get to open your Christmas present now. It's only <laughs> September. Just open it, Destiny. Oh, let's play." And then you just put it in there and play. All right, bedtime. Go. See ya. Yeah. <laughs> get the hell out of here. <laughs> It's going to be a lot of fun, though. Yeah, I'm excited, man. It's going to be a hell of a year for games. October is going to be ridiculous, man. Yeah. yeah, I'm really looking forward to Destiny. I can't wait to get my hands on that game. Advanced Warfare, I think I'm a little less excited for Advanced Warfare than I am for Destiny. Although the multiplayer, that's going to be my multiplayer competitive game over Destiny. The Crucible is fun, but not not quite a Call of Duty experience for me. Yeah, yeah I have a question. Like, cause Do you guys feel... I saw you, Well, I saw Beastly's thoughts. He said that he felt that the game looked really good for Call of Duty. Like, I don't know. I saw other people. I, I feel the same way that some other people said, too, from, like, Machinima said it. So tell me, it's high-res Black Ops 2. It's not that detailed. For all multiplayer, not the single player. Single player okay. looks good. Uh, Call of Duty does that a lot. The single player looks good, but the multiplayer does not look that great. Detailed. I mean... And it I think strongly it's strongly reminds me of Black Ops 2. Yeah, I think it's fine. Well, because they're using real colors again, that's why. Yeah, that's nice Ghost, to see. Ghost is just brown and green. But I meant like the graphics, like everything looks blocky at times. Like the buildings and stuff, you look at the buildings, like they're like perfect edges. <laughs> like, I like, like that though, not too nerdy, because in Call of Duty Ghost, you got all these bush wookies hiding in corners with their ghillie suits <laughs> on, hanging out in bushes. <laughs> you can't fucking see them. Like you look <laughs> right at them and you cannot see them. Hopefully, there will be less of that crap lying around, and if you see a guy sitting in the corner, you'll actually be able to see him. You won't just, like, scan right past him because he looks like a freaking... He looks like a bush. bush. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I haven't know. seen any ghillie suits in, in uh, the multiplayer Good. that I've Good. seen. So, I, I mean, maybe this future setting, they've gotten rid of that. Yeah. And I know you cuz I know you hate those freaking ghillie suits, bro. Yeah, those freaking bushwookies band. They they kill me in <laughs> Call of Duty Ghosts cuz there's so many people camping in corners in that game because it's so easy to do. And then they got those IEDs that you can't fucking see either. They got this little yeah, tiny ass shit. light blinking. <laughs> and like all of a sudden you're like, beep beep boom. Yeah. <laughs> right. They, they saw that problem for you. They knew that oh, he doesn't like when they can't be seen, so this time we're going to cloak them. <laughs> why, why do you need those suits when they can't see you anyway? Like, yeah, <laughs> dressed up like a uh, share running around this thing, and then just cloak when you need it. The thing is, I'm not wowed by the graphics, but the thing is, I feel like they did the right move. That it doesn't matter about the graphics at this point. You want the speed, and it looks like a definitely looks fast pace. It looks. It looks faster than most Call of Duties. I, I don't I don't remember the last time I seen Call of Duty this fast paced. I don't know if you noticed that. I yeah, just it felt like it seemed more fast paced. That's and why I made that comment about the net code is the net code has got to be spot yeah. on because in Black Ops Two it was not. And those characters were the fastest characters we were seeing in a Call of Duty. And that you got people literally shooting around corners and stuff like that mm -hmm. based on you know who was lagging where. So this is going to be. This is going to amplify that problem because now you got 
360 degrees of movement, you're going to be boosting sideways faster than anybody's ever run. And if the net code's no good, you're going to get shot, and then you're you're never ever going to see anybody. Yeah, you're just you going to fall to the ground. No, I mean like uh, like because the net code can't keep up with the player movement. Is that there's going to be somebody shooting at you, and you haven't even seen them, and they've been yeah, staring at you for half a second. You just yeah. fall to the ground. You won't know oh, what okay. happened. Yeah, I, th- I saw you said that you'll fall through the ground. No, yeah. fall to Absolutely. the ground. Absolutely. I mean, you'll just die, because, yeah. and you'll never know what happened until you see the kill cam. You'll be like, I never saw that on my screen. Well, hopefully they can uh, you know, do something similar to the to the uh, net code used, used in Ghosts. I haven't had any of those issues in Ghosts, so... It's better, they're learning, especially they're learning on the PlayStation from... 4. On the Xbox One, I still have... It might be because there's fewer players on the Xbox One, but, uh, yeah, on PlayStation 4, that nut code is solid. The yeah, hit detection is good, too. But, uh, beastly. <clears throat> yeah. As soon as they show the multiplayer, the first thing I said is, <clears throat> new engine, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I started going like, it looks pretty damn similar to the last one. <laughs> it looks like Black like Ops 2 to me. Uh, yeah. It, 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 looks, it looks pristine. You know, it looks like a very pristine uh, environment. I thought that the, the, the attention to detail was pretty good. I only saw two multiplayer uh, gameplays, so I didn't pause it and do, you know, a uh, Frame by frame, but from what I saw, it did look it, it looked pretty interesting. The graphics look good enough for me for a Call of Duty game. I don't know how much better they're going to be than like Call of Duty Ghosts, because the of course the environments are different. But from what I saw, it looked it looked really good. It looked uh, it looked pretty uh, high res and, and it was fast and I think it looks fine for a Call of Duty game. Yeah. So after all the excitement of the multiplayer. Uh, the next day, so they did the multiplayer announcement at Gamescom on Monday night, and then the next day, I think at Microsoft's press conference, they did another single-player de- demo. Good fucking lord, these people can't demo a game. <laughs> God damn, it looks so boring. They made the game look so slow-paced. You yeah. saw it, and he's like waiting behind the car. He pops up, and like, like, yeah, like he's, he's trying really... to move as smooth as possible. Like, like, like he's trying to like sneak past his parents in the middle I, of the night to get out of the like, house. What is he doing? Like, he made it look like it's just funny. Like, that you can make. A game look like a completely different game just by going so slow. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I was just shocked. Man. I couldn't believe I was watching a Call of Duty game. Like when I saw that in the trailer for it. Yeah, that was a terrible demo. They Way did the same thing for the E3 demo. It was terribly slow. And clearly they have like a uh, God mode on because the guy never takes any damage, so you never get like a sense of danger either. Oh, it's a bad demo. Bad demo. Bad. Bad. Bad demo. <laughs> Uh, there was another game that they showed at, uh, at Gamescom, guys. That uh, I want to get you guys' take on this. I don't know if you guys saw it. Uh, it's called I got it here. Uh, Until Dawn. Uh, oh, for yeah, P- for, for, for the PlayStation. Like a like a ha- Evil Dead kind of thing. Yeah, it has Hayden Pintier in it from Heroes, and uh, I, I I love the first season of Heroes. Save the first season. Save the <laughs> Dude, I thought <laughs> like my head. Are bugging out. Like, what the? <laughs> Back in smile mode. You see, not too nervous smiling. Um, but yeah, uh, this game Until Dawn. It looks really interesting. It's using the Killzone Shadowfall engine. So Isn't it's it? gonna, yeah, it's gonna have some really nice environments. When I watched this, I felt like I was watching uh, maybe like a a teen horror flick. Yeah. Scream or something. I don't know what it's gonna be. If it's gonna be uh, supernatural or. Cabin you know, in the woods. Yeah, it's a cabin in the woods type of situation. You, did you guys see it? Yeah, yeah. I don't I mean, like horror games, but I mean, it looked like it was a cool game. Well, we'll see. Usually, when celebrities get involved, it's usually a flop. But uh, who knows? Now they're trying to make a difference. Now Kevin Spacey, you know, who knows? Hayden Pintier might actually make something good. A yeah. video game. Come on, Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis in Apocalypse. That game was hot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Wing Commander. Norman's announced. I mean, that wins. I'm sorry, but Daryl in the game. Oh, you, you gotta give him a crossbow. You're good to go. Oh, like, that'd oh, be yeah. awesome. The only thing that's the thing though. It kind of sucks though. Like someone I saw on the, the forum. Someone said they're like, they're like, but think about it. If you're playing as, if you're playing as Norman, are you really gonna be scared? No. <laughs> <laughs> Although I got to play as Norman in the Walking Dead video game that he was in, and 
That was scary. <laughs> that was Playing a terrible the game. The game experience sucked in that game. Yeah. Yeah, also, they didn't happy to buy that game, too. Oh, man. <laughs> well, what are we talking about? I forgot. We started talking about Norman. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about uh, uh, Until Dawn or whatever. Oh, the right, game. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like horror games that much, but that game did look interesting. It definitely captured that kind of... What, what you guys said, Cabin of the Wood. Evil Dead is what came to my mind. Uh, just kind of like that group of teenagers getting slaughtered one by like one. Like a and, Halloween Jason type thing? Yeah, yeah. It looked like it was campy and fun. I, you don't really get to see what the enemies are. Are they like uh, like kind of rednecks or something? Yeah. I felt like it was like the movie The Strangers. There's somebody oh, okay. coming in there and dragging off, you know, killing the kids and dragging them off someplace to, yeah. you know, dismember their bodies. It looks interesting. Maybe it'll uh, be a Tucker and Dale vs. Evil tie-in. <laughs> <laughs> Because that game needs a video game bad, or that the movie thing is, video game bad. Game, it says it was supposed to come out in 2012, or it was introduced in 2012, uh-huh. and it's introduced for the PS3 for a PlayStation Move, and then they they completely changed. They went back and redid the whole idea for really? PlayStation yeah. 4 without the Move. Well, the the graphics don't look like PS3 graphics. Yeah, I think they re, they redid it. Like they went back and they they, they introduced it at New York Comic Con in 2012. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, those, they, they showed show some. Any of that uh, they didn't show any Halo 5, I don't think. I think they talked about with the beta. Yeah, they did. They showed a little bit. They showed actual yeah. gameplay? Uh, I think so. Maybe it was not gameplay. I think it was Master Chief Collection they showed. Yeah, the Master Chief They showed a lot of Master Chief Collection. Yeah, the multiplayer. Did they that showed, maybe they just showed character models from Guardians. I think, and also I think they showed, like, a map, didn't they? Like, but they didn't, there wasn't a playable map. They just showed, like, the map, like, yeah, the whole landscape of the map. Yeah, you, something like that. Are yeah. you guys excited for that? I mean, uh, Guardians, no. uh, Halo Master Chief Collection. I'm, I'm more excited as it goes. I'm going to get it because I do want to play Halo 2. But, I mean, I, even though everyone loves Halo 3, but I want to play Halo 2. But um, you, you are correct, by the way. Halo 2 is a superior game. Yeah, yeah and, but <laughs> I, I felt like it was always Halo 2, and a lot of people say Halo 3. Like, I don't... No. no, those people, you shouldn't listen to them. They're, I mean, they're trying to do you wrong. <laughs> mortgage broker tell you that? That's, it sounds like something a mortgage broker would say. I'm, I'm going to get it. I think it's going to be good. I mean, like I said, like even though it's rehashing games, it's bringing all of them to one, so why not? Like I, I mean, if, I think it will be good. Yeah, I kind of want to get back into Combat Evolves multiplayer. I think that would be fun, too. Get that OP pistol out. That was a fun pistol. I'll tell you one thing. It's going to be confusing going from, like, Different games, but I think it's a good transition though to go from like uh, Destiny to Halo, Call of Duty to, Halo. to then Ooh. Call of Duty. Cause wait, Halo, which one comes out first again? Uh, Destiny comes oh, out first. Yeah, Destiny comes out in like three and a half weeks. No, 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 Destiny. I mean, which one comes out before? It's Halo comes out before Call of Duty, right? Or no? Oh, I no, don't know. Call of Duty comes first. Call it's Halo's at the end of the November. Halo's like a week after Call of Duty. I think it's the okay. 11th. So, yeah. Never mind. I thought it was be a slow transition. I guess I'm going to have to go from Destiny to Call of Duty <laughs> to Halo. Bre- to breakfast, lunch, confusing. and dinner. I'll play Ask Destiny me. for breakfast. Confusing. Oh, control the out. <laughs> yeah, that is going to be confusing. I'm still <laughs> messing up. Do you remember how uh, Destiny had the... It was the uh, right bumper was the melee? Oh, yeah, yeah. I am still doing that in Call of Duty. I haven't played Destiny in like a month. <laughs> I'm still doing wow. it. <laughs> I'm so excited to play the Warlock. I'm just saying though right now. Me too. Me too. I'm so after seeing it, I can't wait. You call it can't be Warlocks. We gotta switch it up. <laughs> I was the Warlock first, homie. Actually, I was. You didn't play first. I played Alpha. So. Yeah, I, I was a Warlock in Alpha. <laughs> well, my first experience yeah, is the Warlock. <laughs> I'm gonna have all three of those characters. There's no doubt about it. I'll this have. It's gonna take a long time, three. Mr. Rabbit. Yeah. I don't know. The level cap is what twenty, and then you just got. It's twenty nine or thirty. It's thirty, right? No, it's twenty. It, it, it's twenty for that. Then you have the light. Yeah. Level cap. There's level caps. There's light and there's a dark now that they announced too. There's oh really? Dark. There's supposed to be a dark side too. That so they I gotta said have six gonna, characters. They're gonna explain more of that later. That's gonna be that's gonna be a DLC though. That's gonna be later on. That there's gonna be a whole completely new section to do as well. So. I'm and you made. guys, you got to know that they're going to make expansions that are going to raise the level cap. This game is going to never end. It's an MMO. That's basically what it is. And uh, one day it will be level 60, 90, 
It's never going to end. We're going to be stuck on this game until we're 50 years old. I'm okay with that. I really like it. <laughs> I mean, it's actually like World of Warcraft. Big. <laughs> oh, so, Mr. Rabbit, you're not willing to give 343 the benefit of the doubt with this new Halo game? No, I didn't like Halo 4, so why would I like Halo 5? I, mean, I didn't hate Halo 4, but it just didn't have that magic, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's it's weird, guys. I thought you would like that because it that Halo actually felt like the most... It felt like a Call of Duty slash Halo game, which that's been the one that felt the most related to Call of Duty, the Halo 4, in my opinion. The movement, everything felt similar. It felt like a Call of Duty game, which I was shocked. That's why I thought you would like that one because it felt closer to Call of Duty. Yeah, I, I really loved Halo. I loved Halo Combat Evolved. I loved Halo 2 with the multiplayer. I thought that was... I mean, it was revolutionary when it came out. It absolutely was. And then Halo 3, I started to fall off a little bit. That's really where I... Um, after Halo 3, I think I played a lot of Halo 3, but by the time Halo 4 came out, I was fully involved in Call of Duty. I was not playing Halo oh, multiplayer they announced, anymore. Speaking of which, they announced the Halo TV and all that stuff, the... The channels, they introduced yeah, that. Halo channel. Yeah. yeah. Halo channel. They kind of did that before with Halo, didn't they? They had like a special Halo. They revamped it. Another. They yeah. did it again. <laughs> they said, they oops. <laughs> <laughs> I got a question for you guys. Is anybody, is, is anybody uh, picking up Infamous First Light? Yeah, yeah I got a pre order. It's only $15. Wow. I never yeah, even finished it. Infamous Second Son. So you said no for you, bro? Nah. Too much, too much other stuff. You don't have to finish it. It's just $15 down. It has nothing to really do with the true story, pretty much. You can yeah. play it, even if you never played a game before. It's, it's a, all neon, man. It's all yeah. neon. I, I mean, know, there's just I so much other stuff. It's cool that you're playing a different character, but I feel like it's a character that you already played the, the powers for. You already had her power. So it's going to be, I mean, you're going to see from her point of view, which is cool, but at the same time, like, I feel like. The thing that sucks about it, I wish they picked someone that you have not seen the powers to yet or experience the powers. That's the only thing. Cool. Even though Neon was my favorite power. So I'll tell you that right now. Neon was my favorite powers in the game. And that's why I feel like I'm not too excited about it because I played most of the game with Neon. I try to beat everyone with Neon. So that's why, like, to me, it's like I played the whole game mostly with Neon powers anyway. But what do you think, Beastly? Uh, I'll probably get it. I, I enjoyed Infamous uh, when I played it. It's just that I felt after I beat the game, there was nothing else for me to do. And so it was one of those situations where there was no replayability for me, just going around, destroying the DUP trucks, and 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 that was it. You know, finding uh, characters with you know walking around in a certain area. It just wasn't enough. It didn't have a tail at all. It, it was like a Doberman Pinscher. The tail was like that long. It would have been a perfect rental game. Yeah, it really would have, and and, and uh, it had a lot of hype. The game is a fun game, had great uh, motion capture uh, and acting, but there just wasn't enough after you beat the game. After you beat that final boss, I didn't even want to play anymore with the Earth Power. It just wasn't enough for me. But um, I played again. I mean, that's the last game I platinum. I think like it was. If you played both sides, you see how different the stories are. Like the the story is completely. It does well, separate from each other. That's I didn't play. I didn't beat it twice because my wife beat. The, the bad side, yeah. that'd be the good side. So we were there in tandem experiencing them both. I've seen both sides, but to me, it just wasn't enough real change. You did the same things in different ways. Yeah. You know? But I mean, like, if you look at it, though, that's like, I think I took, what, 20 something hours to beat the whole game completely, like, to platinum it. So, I mean, that's that pretty really good. Is their money's worth. Like, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Pretty yeah. Good I, 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 don't regret, I don't regret the purchase at all. I mean, it's still an awesome game. If I ever want to just jump in it and go kick some ass, some bad guys, I'll do it. But yeah. it just isn't enough to warrant my attention right now. I like, think I, that's I, you know that's what happens. When there's no multiplayer. Right? Like yeah. once there's no multiplayer in a game, like once you're down the the story, then it's pretty much like what the, yeah, what, what else can you do? do? It's like it's like at the end of Grand Theft Auto when you beat the the game. What do you do? You drive around causing trouble, running over hookers. Doing cheat codes and, and bringing five stars upon yourself until you get another game. There's nothing else Sounds to like do. Sounds like a Tuesday night to me, man. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are we still talking about the game anyway? <laughs> yeah, it, 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 this game didn't even have that much. It's just, you know, nothing really to do other than experience the powers, running up and down buildings, flying across the city. And, uh, you know, the, the non player characters don't even exist in the game. You can't, you know, go to certain parts of the city and, and do side quests. It just didn't exist. So to me, 
after I beat that game, it went in that box, and I, I haven't pulled it out since. I didn't even finish it. It just didn't hold my interest. I don't have it still. Since I beat the final, I got rid of But, like, I gave, it, I gave it away. So. You guys ready for a dumb question? Sure. I'm always Sounds ready good. for a dumb question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to start with Robbie first. Robbie, you still there? I, I don't have video of you, but I think I hear you. Oh, gosh, I'm here. Uh, All right, yeah, I'm here. All Ratchet right. and Clank's there, in case you're <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Robbie, tell me what the best current trend in video gaming is, and tell me what the worst one is. Did I really say Ratchet and Clank? I just realized that. Sorry. <laughs> Good that we can still hear you Clank, masturbating. We can still hear you masturbating, Robbie. Yeah, yeah okay. We doesn't all. mean we don't know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this got know. creepy all of a sudden. As soon as you said that, I was like, wow, I really can see what he's talking I can hear him. <laughs> he's playing with that long joystick again. Long <laughs> dome <laughs> joystick. That's the fun over here. Is it, is it black? Oh. Yes, it's black, of course. <laughs> Both of them are black. All two of them. Oh, shit. <laughs> Just ask the same question, man. <laughs> All right, but um, best and worst trends in games. Yeah. Uh, worst trend absolutely has to be like microtransactions and pay to win and all that. That shit needs to die. I can't stand that. Mm -hmm. Like, especially in Call of Duty Ghosts, like they have the DLC camels and stuff like that. And most you of them like aren't that. that good. Like that is bullshit. Yeah. So stop doing that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't shit. mind it, Robbie. As long as it doesn't affect who, win, who well, the outcome of a multiplayer match. Like, I don't <laughs> yeah, really care right. what camo you have or if you bought it or whatever. Like It doesn't matter to me. But if you paid for a gun that's better than mine, that's a problem. That's What's true. the question I... again? Best and worst trends in video games. Okay. Current video games. So a best trend. Best trend. Best. Best trend. What's the best trend? What's the best trend in video gaming? I'm understanding. I'm just letting it know. Today. But yeah. <laughs> Not tomorrow? Today? Today. Today. Best trend. So yesterday? In okay. video gaming. Today. Uh, I don't know. I guess I don't... I guess I don't... <laughs> this is getting real creepy real fast. <laughs> You want to take a pass on the best one? I don't really know what to say. I'm maybe I don't understand it well enough, or like. Well, I'll I'll, you know, I'll, like... I'll give my answers. And right, then you can... Yeah, come right, back. Uh, Enlighten the folks. For me, the worst trend in video gaming is the dance peripherals, or the the band peripherals. I think that trend's over, though, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> one of the worst. Two thousand. Yeah. <laughs> to me, that that's one of the worst trends I've seen in gaming. To me, one of the best trends... I fucking loved that, Rock Band. <laughs> I did for like 20 minutes. Yeah. It, it died out. But to me, the best trend in gaming is annual subscriptions to things like PlayStation Plus and uh, Xbox Games with Gold. I think that that stuff pays for itself, and uh, it, it's so much value, especially the fact that you don't know what you're going to get, and it's you're always excited and pleased with PlayStation Plus. So I think that annual subscription services are my favorite... New trend. I like the trend of getting free or getting stuff with that because I paid for years. It says on my uh, Xbox One when I log in that I've been a member of Xbox Live for 10 years now. Holy shit, are you that old? <laughs> yeah. You're yes. an old guy. He's exactly 10 <laughs> years old. <laughs> I've had Xbox Live as long as my kids have been alive. Wow. <laughs> Jeez. I, and, and I remember when they first started Xbox Live, I thought it was going to be a fading fad. Uh, because, I you mean, know, the Dreamcast had, you could plug in your internet connection to the Dreamcast and put that ridiculous disc in there. I thought that that crap was going to go straight out the window. Yeah. Little so did I, I know. I, I wonder if I still have that disc, because I'd love I to do. try and use the internet with that. Yeah, right. Make a video of trying to use the internet. That'd be a funny video. Get a pop-up saying, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> All right, so you went with uh, Rock Band. Rock very Band current, for a <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I can think of something now that's a bad trend. No, that's fine, because you're going to take my answer. You're yeah, that's a good point. Answer, no? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Not too nervous, like, no, 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 no more. <laughs> okay, you're good. It. You're good. All right, good. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Not Too Nerdy. What do you got? <laughs> I forgot mine now. Hold on. <laughs> Best show right. on the internet. All right, 
Beast of the Gamer, go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 I got, I got. We're all off track. The worst trend yeah. is microtransactions. Yeah. Yeah. They now I talk about DLC. It's the difference between download content, download content, and microtransactions. Microtransactions like hurt the industry where you purposely like pay the win and stuff like that. That's just not right, and I think that hurts the industry and it's it's unfair. You know, there's a reason why they're needed in things like cell phones because you can't, you know, once they download an app, that's it. So, like, there's incentives for make people keep paying you for mm-hmm. what they're playing. That makes The free-to-play cool. model. Yeah, but when you're doing it on a console or PC, it's, it doesn't make as much sense, you know. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it's right. There's some exceptions to that when, I, when you have someone, like, get, like, stuff that doesn't affect the game, where it's things that are just cosmetic stuff. Like mm-hmm. that, then I think that's fine. But when yeah, I got no problem with that either. You know, when it's something that actually alters the game, and you feel like you have to get it, otherwise you're not going to do well, then I think that's wrong. So uh, microtransactions is, you know, not that good. Um, mm-hmm. Oh man, I can't believe I forgot that's like true. the the one that I was going to say for what's a good trend in the industry. Oh no, I can't. I really can't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man. Uh, I should have wrote it down. <laughs> you and Robbie are awesome. So between Robbie and Not Too Nerdy Entertainment, we have a complete answer. <laughs> yeah, I, I had it in my head, though. We'll like, combine our answers just... together and make one. Sweet. See, we can see Not Too Nerdy. He's frozen on the screen. We can't I'm see gotta, Robbie. I got to look it up. Like I think person. someone else should go, and then, I, and then I'll go. All right, I'll go ahead. If I react upset, then that's because he took my answer. My <laughs> favorite thing that's going on in gaming right now is the multiplayer aspect of gaming. Uh, you know, we're getting these huge campaigns that you can play with your friends, like in Destiny. Uh, so many great multiplayer games like Battlefield 4 and Call of Duty. Like, it is... The consoles seem to be just designed around, you know, playing with your friends. Uh, you know, Sony even announced a new feature to help you find your friends. You know, like, that is a cool feature in System Software 2.0 to actually help you find people to play with because it's going to be such an important part of these games in the future. And that's my favorite part, uh, being able to play with friends in a real way. You know, I, I, you've always been able to play couch multiplayer, but now you can play, you know, with six friends over the Internet and, like, really you're communicating th- with, uh, you know, the headsets. And I think that's awesome. I think it's really fun. It makes gaming a lot more fun. So the worst one. The worst one is uh, the fact that I have to buy a sixty dollar game, and then I buy a sixty dollar season pass, and then I still have to pay money for that fucking camo. I want that goddamn camo, but I don't want to spend more than one hundred and twenty bucks for it. <laughs> His worst trend centered around Call of Duty. <laughs> they. It's funny too because they used to give you all that shit for free. Uh, now they charge you double what they used to charge for the game. And yeah. they still charge more for the DLC because they know they know you'll pay for it. They, yeah, they, they do, and I do because. And you know why I pay for it is because I'm making all these videos of Call of Duty. I'm like, well, I I feel like I want to change it up a little bit, so you're not staring at the exact same goddamn. Hey, gun. I, you can play some <laughs> Last of Us, Briar Rabbit, but your last video kind of explained why you you don't play well with others. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, I remember mine now. I remember the, uh, the good thing. In the industry right now is uh, I'm gonna say beta testing because it helps both the developers mm. that it gets a test and it helps people try out the game to see if this is what they really want as well and like it's a win-win for both sides because then when the game comes out like you you know it should be better than what it would have been before it was out and I think how about, that's how about that's paying for early access like in uh, Daisy what do you think no. about that? That's that's different. Not something you pay. I think I, I went over that last time we talked about. It. Not yeah. like you pay for it. That's ridiculous. I'm talking about free beta. Even if it's like where you have to pre-order the game first in order to get beta access, it's still yeah. wait for them because you go always cancel a pre-order if you don't like the game. You know, yeah. you go. It's it's a win for you because you get to test it out before, it, or you should know whether or not you like the game or not before it. And that's for you. And on the other side, for developer side. It helps them determine, like, the servers. It gets their servers right. It gets to see balancing issues that they're going to need to worry about. It helps everyone yeah. in that sense. So I think that's that a, is a That's a good pick. I like that one. I was going to say... Uh, I want Sony dropping bombs. Every time they have a conference now, they give you a free game to play right afterward. Yeah. I like that trend. That's cool. 
Uh, nine yeah. to five asked a question, by the way, in the comments. Yeah. He says, "I got a question." Okay. <laughs> we got that part. <laughs> Usually, uh, that's, that would solve by having a question mark at the end of the sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I'm exactly. sorry, guys. I had to, I had to mute myself. My wife was asking me about fried chicken. I had to give her my complete attention. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, what did nine to five gamers want? Nine to five said. Uh, do you guys feel the only reason Tomb Raider is timed exclusive and coming holidays next year is to compete with Uncharted? Uh, no. Do you think... I don't know if that's the answer, but, you know, Sony did uh, sell Square Soft or Square Enix shares. Maybe someone's a little upset about that and said, fuck you, Sony! It's, uh, a, good, <laughs> it's a good thought, though. I hadn't thought of it. Well, I think, well, because that... I heard when you said that, I was like, maybe I could be, but for the most part, remember, they're working closely for Kingdoms of Hearts, and I know Sony's getting stuff for that exclusive, too, for Kingdoms of Hearts, so, like, I don't see that being a big thing, because they're going to get exclusive content for Kingdoms of Hearts, so it I don't... makes sense for Microsoft to have an answer to Uncharted, though. Yeah, that's why I know, I think that's what 9to5 says, I think that's what Microsoft's looking at it, like, I yeah. need something to compete against Uncharted. I don't think that's... You got, I, don't, you got, I don't think that's... A good competition there, though. You don't think so? I think I think t the first Tomb Raider was awesome. I, the yeah, first Tomb Raider was awesome, but on the level of success and notoriety, it can't compete with Uncharted. It just it's can't. a demonstrably better game than Uncharted One, and on par with Uncharted Three. I think I mm. think that the old Tomb Raiders, and when the height of the Tomb Raider's success, yeah. I think that would have been a good competition against Uncharted. But now I think. Just a popular Uncharted is too much of Tomb Raider. Even though Tomb Raider Agreed. like moved up, the game was good. I just think that it was spectacular. Back Tomb Raider, I think that game was spectacular. The game was good. Don't get me wrong. The game was yeah, good. Yeah. For sure. It, it just seemed like it was lacking. I don't know. Like there's more suspense. I feel like Uncharted just had that more suspense. Like you're on the edge. It felt like you're in the movie still. Like that's the difference. Like Tomb Raider like slowed down sometimes, and like you didn't feel like closely related to character. I felt Uncharted. You're always at your, at your seat. And you're part of the movie. Uncharted two. I agree with you. Uncharted yeah. two. Uh, yeah, Uncharted I've never three felt... so mechanics pissed me off. But yeah, Uncharted three was a step back. It was still a good game. Yeah. Like I liked it a lot, but Uncharted two. I've never felt like I was involved in an action movie like that. I was constantly surprised with the set pieces and like the level of interactivity and like, do you guys remember jumping from truck to truck? Yeah, like, yeah, hell the end yeah, of that yeah. Game? I was like, holy shit, this, yeah. this not only does this look amazing, but it feels amazing yeah. too. Like it really feels good. Or like, oh man, that game was I, good. I like Contrary Where? Three, that plane scene though, when you're what? in the plane. That you're like oh, climbing I, up it? Yeah, that, yeah, that was, was cool. cool. This is That's my thing, cool. though. With, with the Uncharted name in itself, everybody knows what Uncharted is. It's got a huge following. And then they just showed, Naughty Dog showed actual, you know, in-engine stuff of what the game could look like. That game looks un unlike any of the previous games. It's a total overhaul graphically. So with all the notoriety the game already has, everybody's expecting this shit to come out and just be mind-blowing. They didn't. They haven't shown anything like that with Tomb Raider. We've already seen the definitive edition, so people are probably expecting more of that. That was a PlayStation Three and Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty game, though, just uppressed. Yeah. I know. But we don't we know what next gen Tomb Raider will look like. Well, the that's problem what, is, it's not that's just what I'm next saying. gen, though, because it's also it's Xbox gonna be on the old too. That's a good point. That's you a good know? point. That's what I'm that. saying is that this new Uncharted game is going to be PS4 exclusive. They've already shown it. You know, it can't be done on the old. And we've seen the Tomb Raider Definitive Edition. That's the best of, that we've ever seen in a Tomb Raider game. Yeah. And uh, I just don't think those two can stand neck to neck. I just don't think they can. To be honest with you, I think we can all agree on this. If you have to pick between Tomb Raider, Uncharted, Indiana Jones wins. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> not, 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 not in Crystal Skull, though. Oh, that, yeah. that no. shit didn't happen. That's not yeah. That's not what right. are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a nightmare. Sorry, guys. George Lucas died in 1989 and has not done anything since. <laughs> wow. <laughs> there was also no Highlander 2 while we're speaking of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Should we wrap this one up, guys? Yeah, I had a lot of fun, man. Always do. I love my Sundays. Anybody right, just... got anything coming up they want to talk about? Uh, I I just did a new video. I I think I got a new series that I'm getting ready to start. Yeah. It's called what's called What's Up? 
And uh, it's what's up, baby? What's up? Well, let me be a little, a little bit, a little bit more. Huh? What's up, cuz? Oh, uh, okay. Um, <laughs> this uh, series is going to be. <laughs> I, don't game play. I don't get the gong for that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what kind Pretty of guns are they smoke in Canada, everybody. What kung fu? Like, <laughs> what kind of weed do they have in Canada? No, the problem is it's delayed too when I hit it. It's kind of annoying. But, yeah. but um, this new series I'm doing called What's Up is going to be about the situations and ills of the world, things that I see every day, and uh, stuff that everybody should notice, but it appears that nobody does. The video that I'll be uploading after this show is uh, it's called What's Up with Music. Uh -huh. And uh, it's talking about how what music has come from. You know, I grew up in the Are 80s. Are you going to talk about where the new kids on the block is gone? Because I miss them dearly, and I don't understand what's up with that. <laughs> you can you can see Marky e. Mark in the latest Transformers movie, which you've already seen. So <laughs> that never happened. Uh, but it it it's talking about where music has come from, where it's gone, and why I'm so depressed about it. Make sure you guys check it out. Everybody who's watching the show, check it out. Leave your comments, and uh, if people like. This new series, I want to move forward with it, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Cool. I'll definitely check that out. It's going to be live after the show? Yeah, and it's face Perfect. cam with The Last of Us. You get to see some awesome gameplay. Face cam with The Last of Us. Did you paste your face on Joel's body? Just like this. <laughs> That's way too creepy. All right. Two things. Uh, even people don't like it at first, stick with it until you'll get you'll track people that do like it. And then just oh, keep. Oh, yeah, new series always starts slow. Yeah. There's something that I've been thinking about for a long time. It's a new channel. Of course, I'm not there yet, but my new channels it I already have the name known and everything. And once Don't this, I'm not sir. <laughs> <laughs> once once I uh I get the the following that I feel that this channel deserves, I'm gonna start that new channel. And it's gonna be about this kind of stuff totally. So I'll have two channels one day. Okay. I've toyed with that idea every once in a while, like starting a second channel that just does Let's Plays. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. I've like never that. had people complaining about it that I put Let's Plays on my main channel. So. I, I thought about that today. I was like, maybe I should just start my new channel today. I got some time. And I was like, well, I'm still a new YouTuber. I'm trying to grow. Maybe I'll just attract those people with these videos. And, and then once, once I grow a little bit, then I can expand to the other channels. So that's what I'm going to do. I hope you guys like it. Pain in the ass to like log into multiple Google accounts too. I know, I got two. Now when they're all linked together, Google makes it so easy. Everything's linked to each other. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, yeah when no I think choice. Google, I think easy. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, like are you sure you don't want right to sign to not too nerdy and tea today? <laughs> <laughs> are you really sure? <laughs> yes, Google. <laughs> What are you? What are you guys up to, Nazi Nerdy? What are you up to this week? I'm going to uh, once again. Well, right after this video, yeah. I'm going to be having a vlog that's talk about something that we talked about today, which awesome. is exclusive. The meaning of exclusive, and like I, the problem I see in the industry right now, and a lot of it was on Microsoft side, but also Sony in the past has done that too. And I think it's a time for them to stop doing that and be very clear to the consumer. I'm sick of all these Amiga exclusive bullshit lies. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just the lies. Like, if you just come out and say, yeah, cool. just come out and say, console exclusive, whatever. Just say what it is. It's not going to hurt your sales. You're being honest, and just do it. Like, but anyway. The um, thing I'm is, also, dirty, not being clear about it can only hurt you. Not yeah. being clear and, and concise about what you're doing can only hurt you because it'll it'll piss off the consumer. Yeah. And uh. Yeah, so I'm also going to do the, another video game pickups tomorrow. Um, I got, you know, I'm finishing off my friend's pickups finally. It's all the Sega Genesis games that he gave me. Um, on top of that, I you got... Check like, in the Forever Man? Yeah. <laughs> you have that? Seriously? No. <laughs> Damn! Um, <laughs> dude, I, I got some pretty good games, but the thing is, it's funny, because there's a game I talked about last week that I said it would be pretty cool if I found it, and I found it at a Goodwill this week. When I never been to like a Goodwill to do that before, and I found it right away. I didn't even know they had video games at Goodwill. Yeah, they do, and like they don't know how to price things there, so yeah, it was I'm cool. I'm going to the Goodwill. And <laughs> games, you're getting some new school clothes. Oh, I'm finally gonna have the one video. I'm almost done editing it, but it'll be up next week, and it's gonna be the summer movies, and it's gonna have. I'm gonna discuss all the movies about like less, a couple seconds, like 30 seconds for each movie, and I'm gonna say which one 
And like, I'm not going to announce a winner, but I'm going to ask people which one's a winner, and then I'm going to say which one I feel is the best video of the summer. If you pick and, anything besides Guardians of the Galaxy, you're objectively wrong. <laughs> well, I'm going I'm to hey, rank them, though. So I'm going to ask should, people. You should let you the people vote. It's going to be to the people. Let the people vote. What was that? Have you looked at a list of our presidents? <laughs> that is clearly not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm gonna do that to see what it's like. I'm gonna see next week if I might do unbox a video. I have no idea if I'm gonna get something, but I'll find out next week. And that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm just still waiting for Destiny. It's really not too much to do. Yeah, yeah. three and a half weeks. <clears throat> Robbie, what do you got going on this week? Uh, just I don't know. I just want Destiny to come out. That's all. I don't know what else. It's just destiny in my life. That's all I need right now. Just destiny. And that's all. I've been playing a lot of the Call of Duty Nemesis DLC. Have you guys seen any of that? It looks it's fun. I really yeah, it looks Gold fun. Rush. Gold Rush is I think my new favorite map in that game. I was gonna say I like that Donkey Kong level. Yeah, the, the minecart. Yeah, yeah. Minecart madness. <laughs> yeah, there's like a you can find a, a short rounds hat and uh and uh, Indiana Jones' whip in there. Really? Yeah. Seriously? <laughs> yeah, it's in there. Uh, and it, the level is fun, though. There's like, there's multiple levels. And it's got a, uh elevator to go between them. It's a fun level. I really enjoy it. I, they brought back a Call of Duty 4 map shipment. Uh, that game, that map is stupid unless you're playing like a 1v1, though. Like, when you have 12 people on that map, it's so small that it just feels completely random. Imagine ground hey. one, the map of 18. Oh, man. It would be insane. Right. Um, yeah. I saw your one video, and I, I was wondering, I didn't know that you could die. Like, in one of the carts, your yeah. teammate was in a cart, and you were, like, standing yeah. there, and, like, you wanted to shoot someone else, and you got ran yeah. over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not the first time I've gotten run over by those fucking things, either. <laughs> that's funny, dude. <laughs> like, I knew that cart was there. I don't know why I didn't strafe out of the way while I was shooting the guy, but... Apparently my brain was full. <laughs> no more input allowed. <laughs> now loading. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's cool though. They got like a new sub sub base level too. That that's pretty good. I like it. Uh, what was the third one or the fourth one? Oh well. Uh, Showtime. Put... Or... Yeah, Showtime is the shipment remake. Then the Call of Duty or the base. The oh uh, the Dynasty. Dynasty is cool. It's like this. It reminds me of Castle from World at War. You remember that? Oh yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. This, like, uh, yeah. like uh, uh, this is Chinese, but it's like this Chinese town. It's it's all like real sharp corners and close quarters battle. It's a good map. I'll, I really like the new maps. So yeah, that's what I'll be doing this week too, because Destiny comes out in three and a half weeks. Hey, and I want to say, that, <laughs> I want to say to everybody watching, we really do appreciate all you guys tuning in and checking oh, yeah. out your thoughts. It means the world to all of us. It premieres on Briar's channel, but from time to time I put it on mine. Not to nerdy puts it on his. You guys comment, let us know how much you like the sh the, the channel, the show, and uh, make any suggestions you guys would like to see or want us to talk about in the future. But from the bottom of my heart, for everybody else here, we want to thank everybody out there for checking out the BC Thought Show. It means a lot. Thank to you guys us. so much. <laughs> hey, we just sounded like we just ended like an episode of Full House. I don't know if you realize that. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Thank you, Uncle Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to go listen to Marky Marky and the Funky Bunch. Oh, yeah. <laughs>